Hello? What's up? What's up? Hey, Carl, what's up? Okay, welcome to Bombhole Group Chat, Episode 3, presented by Run Through a Wall Smelling Salts, juggernaut of a company, and also Pub Beer. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the show, the concept is to be a hub for discussion of current snowboarding topics. We're going to talk video projects, clips, contests, the health of the industry. We talk to everyone from riders to product designer, industry people. We're just addressing the current state of our sport slash industry. We're having a loose format conversation about all things snowboarding. A lot of the topics are submitted by you guys, our Patreon members, and also via Instagram. Uh, today's show is sponsored by Bubs Naturals, Capita, Yeti, Union, Dragon, Icon, Sunbum, Oakley, Nitro, Hippies, and Pub Beer. So huge thanks to all of our sponsors. And today in studio, we got a great cast. We got Gimbal God to my right. What's happening, Gimby? Styling. How are you guys? Doing great. We're happy that you're here. We got Fat Gabe and Joe Sexton to my left. Yes, sir. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. <laughs> and of course, the most, the staple of the bomb hole booth, we got Silk D back there. Notice you're wearing a hat today, Silk. Yep. How's the mullet? It's in there. Is it's it? It's doing good, yeah. Yeah. Any product in the hair today? Mm, just water, same as every day. Okay, looks great. It's a shame <laughs> you can't see the outfit, though. It is, yeah. 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 It's Fit cool. of the day. Fit of the day goes to Silk D, as always. Also, later in the show, we're going to be taking a call from Searcy. Uh, she's calling to announce some stuff for natural selection. We have Johan, big sales guy from Capita and C3, talking about sales in the snowboard industry. We got some product talk with Pat Moore. And uh, we're going to break down the media landscape, talk about some recent videos, all kinds of snowboard jargon coming at you. But first, let's check in with Fat Gabe over here. Big <laughs> night last night, Gabe. <laughs> How are we feeling? I'm feeling a little shaky, but I'm doing good. Okay, well, yeah. Be here. Why don't you fill us in what happened last night? Because it's Friday. This episode's going to come out Wednesday. Um, fill the people in. Uh, we had it was a uh, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday night, <laughs> six eight six premiere. There was two videos: Keegan Osfras and BMO the Barrel Seeker had a video, and then Tommy and. Riley and Dara and Forrest had an insane video, so just kind of everyone at Evo getting lit up, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, I want to know, what's the over-under on tonight, Tommy being able to walk at the end of the night? Because I think we might need to bring a gurney in there, because I feel like Tommy's going to be getting <laughs> losing some bodily functions tonight. Yeah, hopefully. I don't know. I bet a bunch of people are going to be faded tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Big night tonight. Tell the people what's going on. Yeah, we got a big night tonight. We got a Brown Cinema first premiere, world premiere at uh, the Depot in Salt Lake. Should yeah. be mad fun. Two-year project. Mm -hmm. Two-year project. Bunch of homies. Honestly, just having mad fun. Like Everyone's like, dude, I'm so excited to see the video. I'm so excited to see the video. I'm like, yeah, it's like... Probably going to be pretty good, but, like, I'm like, I don't know if I filmed that gnarly as shit. Like, I was kind of having fun boozing with my best friends, like, all year. But, no, it, it was, like, good-ass time. Cool. Yeah, I got the leak from Butters. Uh, I can assure all of our listeners it's fucking awesome. Uh, and the premiere night is going to be amazing. Now, I want to know who's, like, Phil, for the people that don't know, who's in this video? Uh, Sam Taxwood, Blake Paul, Woo. Parker Zamowski, Nick Baden, Jared Elston. Mason Lemery, Ika Backstrom, Brandon Cocard, and Kale Zima. I think I just nailed that one. Wow. Yeah. But then we have a bunch of other homies that were, we were filming with, like, uh, oh, Severin. We filmed with Severin. Mm -hmm. He's got a part. I-Man. Uh, I-Man. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chucky. Chucky Don Graham. Yep. Chucky Don Graham is the shit. Yeah. He's my favorite <laughs> snowboarder. Um, yeah. I don't know. We linked up with a bunch of homies. It was dope. Cool. Uh, we got a question from Instagram here from John Martin. He says, Gabe, have you blazed? Are you chilling? Dude, I get this one from John Martin like <laughs> every time. And yes, have blazed. I am chilling. <laughs> Yet again, <laughs> nothing's new. I also like this, this one from Carter, uh, Carter Bupp. He says, Gabe, how insane was it to see the dudes at Imagination chucking? Oh, what, yeah. He's asking about the moto event. Red yeah, Bull Bearman's moto event. Yeah, Tyler Bearman, dope ass motocross, or just like moto homie, goes huge, does whips. I've never really seen anything like that in person. And then you go like, go to that event. You're like, holy shit. Those guys are 
fucking crazy. They're hitting like 160 foot gaps yeah. and shit. Homie went 180 and he's just got to test the jump by himself. They have like a straight up, like everyone's like, that looked good, that looked good. But you like have no clue. <laughs> yeah. And then if he doesn't make it, it's like probably like broken femur or some shit. Mm-hmm. So gnarly. Yeah, he asked, uh, he also asked to follow up. Uh, what do you feel like you guys bring as snowboarders to dirt bikes? Dude, I I honestly don't know. Um, I think they like me. We could like drink with them. <laughs> with smoke some weed or something. Yeah, like, kind of on the same level. Out and not. they still got us in that. Yeah. <laughs> you know up. what's cool about the, the moto homies fuck with snowboarders though? Like yeah. Axel and Tyler and all those dudes. Dude, they mm-hmm. like watch all of our videos. Or at least I'm only speaking from like hanging with Axel. But I think they watch our videos and like the flow and like. Mm-hmm. How we, I don't know, maybe you like ride like a goalie, like a half pipe or whatever. Mm-hmm. At least, no, Axel, like when he like kind of like, just like washes speed or whatever, like, mm-hmm. like he'll kind of like scrub like snowboarding almost like mm-hmm. around like turns and shit. It's yeah. see. Tyler said too, like whips are like methods. And yeah. He's talking about like he likes Travis Rice and he yep. watches those videos and he's like, a big whip for moto is like a method on a snowboard. Yeah. yeah but it's like, like oh, a, that's cool. It's like a way gnarlier, scarier method. <laughs> yeah, it's, just like, well, no, dude, it's, it's about it's the same as me doing on a 30 foot jump at, <laughs> at Highland. <laughs> it's the yeah, same exactly. thing. Exactly the same. No, I think it's all perspective though. It's like, it, like they've been doing that their whole life. You right. Know? It's like, I. I don't want to hit a handrail. Like mm-hmm. I haven't hit a handrail since like 21. Like mm-hmm. it sounds terrifying, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I, I think it's cool. They kind of pull inspo. Tyler always talks about he like pulls it from snowboarding. Like you watch a slope style and and like backcountry snowboard parts and and then they're kind of taking some inspiration from other action sports and bringing it to moto. But mm-hmm. I could yeah. talk moto all Even day. Even Axel doing so. nose manis is like oh, yeah. that's for sure pulled from that, and it's Dude, super cool. It's so sick. Yeah, and like I don't know. Like I think. Moto is one of those things where I feel like we all secretly love it because it's kind of like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. And you know you're not even going to, like, try to step to even get close. Like, I ride, like, Axles 110, like, point A to point B, don't need to do anything else. Get into second gear, Mm -hmm. I ain't moving. But, like, it's such, like, a, like... I've never gotten into stopper. second gear even, so you're second, ahead of me. You yeah. ever hear the story when Joe uh, <laughs> on his birthday rode a dirt bike? Have you guys ever heard this one? <laughs> no. Uh, unbelievable. It's a good one, yeah. <laughs> you want me to tell it? I would love for you to tell it. It was my 21st birthday, <laughs> and I had just gotten on like Etnies in 32 and met JP Walker for the first time, no. who was my childhood hero. So I'm already like shaky and whatever, and and he's got this dirt bike because they were doing the Steezy Rider Tour. Do you remember that when they take the dirt bikes to all the, all yeah. like the, they would go to Bear and stuff and they would cruise around on it? And I'm like 21, <laughs> pretty like had some beverages and he's like, try it out, dude. And like, just sit on it. And I was like, oh, I never rode a dirt bike. And he starts it up and he's kind of like doing the thing where you kind of get it going. Uh-huh. And then I was like, kind of trying to be like, yeah, like I got this. And then I let off the clutch and it kind of pulled away. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then he's like, he said to like pull it to stop it. Mm-hmm. But I literally was just like, I'm going to show him like that I can. And I kicked it into gear and I like wheelied and burned out mm-hmm. at his house. Met him for about... <laughs> Met, like just just kind of meeting him yeah and like was going out into like his road where there's all these cars yeah and actually if i would have went straight i would have just got hit by a car no. so i turned it and just put it into his house no and like ran and crashed <laughs> into his house he got up and i was all like like oh, oh my, my god i'm so god. sorry like That's first awesome. time ever and then who comes over he's like i'll call my friend to come fix it and then his friend is Jeremy Jones. And oh, I'm like my god. i hate my childhood so- my myself yeah, like my childhood so self sick. would be so bubbed your first like first impression with these guys and that's it. And I got like long fucking hair and I'm just like, oh shit, dumped your bike, dude. Yeah, I crashed the moto. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't been on one since. And then yeah, I was just I on an L1 trip and uh, um, Jordan Morris had his bike. Yeah. And I was getting into first and I just like couldn't, I have like trauma. Dude, <laughs> I can't get out of bike. Man. I would too. It's actually been working with a therapist. I've been working with a therapist. It's actually a really sensitive that. topic. I'm kind of upset you brought that it up. That one incident's cost me $400 a week. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> But it was crazy, and just to crash it, and then like uh, to to do that and see what those guys are doing, it's insane. It's wild. Yeah, it's wild. So uh, this is a good segue from a Patreon question from one of our members, Brodi Chappelle. He says, "Joe, what's the best piece of advice the Don gave you back in the stepchild days? Anything come to mind?" Damn. Um, I think I just learned like le- he led by example. Like he was super healthy, um, super professional. And I think at that time, yeah, it wasn't even what he taught me. It's just like what I saw him 
like do and I kind of absorbed a lot of that. Like I think before I kind of got into that, I was definitely like eating candy, eating junk food, like probably drinking quite a bit and whatever. And when I got with them, it's like those trips were like professional and, and work and it was really cool to see how much work can put into like getting these clips and these things. So I learned a ton from him, but he never really sat me down and really told me anything. It was just like lead by example. And um, I guess the one thing was just like to enjoy it too. And we talked about, he was kind of at this point in his career where he had already accomplished so much and I was kind of first starting and he kind of just like saw that in himself and was like, just enjoy. Mm -hmm. I was stressing out a lot with tricks and stuff like that. And he's like, it's all right, you know? And he, um, he was an insane mentor though. Like to, to be with him during those like really like impactful years, it was, it was incredible. So I owe a lot to him just for like my whole mindset changing back then. Yeah, I remember cool. around that time he used to refer to you as isosceles body. Uh, <laughs> could you elaborate on that? Yeah, that was him and I think Stevens, right? And it <laughs> yeah. was because I I have a wide shoulders mm -hmm. and like a narrow waist. <laughs> isosceles body. <laughs> <laughs> and they said I looked like a teed up golf ball sometimes. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> that's like how that whole like frog thing, all that shit they just make fun of my my body make, and, fun, uh, make yeah. fun of your stature make you fun know. of my stature but yeah I, and then it just turned into eye sauce and yeah, it's eye sauce. yeah it's pretty funny <laughs> oh man and then uh this is a good one for you joe here cake pound crew wants to know joe what has been the most regrettable kit style of your career what made you go damn that was insane never again from cake pound crew I don't really have any like never again because it was all like at the time I was feeling myself mm -hmm. like when I was walking out with like the shoelace headband <laughs> opened like floral blouse mm -hmm. and like quarter like the whole thing I was like I felt good um maybe one oh man I don't know I mean nothing super regrettable I guess like some of those kits were just heinous but I still had fun with it giraffe print pants with a uh, Hawaiian <laughs> shirt and tie-dye shirt underneath it maybe not my best my best look <laughs> that but, would sound uh, pretty sick yeah all right, I got a topic for you guys. Uh, you know, it's a theme that you see more and more lately in videos. And we're going to get into more video stuff later, but just kind of briefly. A lot of videos these days, they don't have titles of the riders. It's like a big montage. And unless you really are in the know, you, you don't know who's on the screen per se. A lot of the riders have the same outfits. Uh, what are your guys' takes on, on kind of like name titles and individual parts versus, you know, no name title videos? Uh, I think it just depends on how well, many cut, people... Pull your mic a little closer. Sorry. Me? Yeah. I think it just depends on how many people are kind of in the video. Because if it's a montage and it's like three people, you could get away with that, I feel like. But I don't know, for like longer videos, probably need the names. My mom's always pissed. She's like, w who's writing? I'm like, mom, this is Ben's movie. It's all Ben. Like... <laughs> It's all good. Oh, yeah. Fleeting time was like that. Yeah. It was all montage. And my mom's always, I'm sitting next to my mom. She's like, who is it? I'm like, mom, it's all Ben. Like, yeah. I mean, there's other people, but I'm like, it's probably Ben. Like me. <laughs> yeah. I remember at that premiere, uh, somebody came up to me and was so mad that there wasn't name titles. Really? They were like, I don't know who's on the screen. Why would sponsors want to pay them? They don't, they're not, they don't know who the writer is. Yeah. I don't know who the writer is. They're, they're having a meltdown. Mm -hmm. Gimby, I know you got a take on this. I mean, for me, it's just lazy editing. Mm. Like if I like, like, like in a lot of like the stale lifes, I was like so over already editing the video. I'm like, the last thing I wanted to go through is like fucking spend an hour doing names. And that's like, it's selfish, but like, we were going to do name titles on, like, all my YouTubes lately, but I'm pretty sure Dimitri doesn't know who all the people are. <laughs> and then he texts me, who are these people? And I, like, am in the jungle or something and don't hit him back, and he just throws it up. So I'm saying lazy editing, because you can always figure out, like, a steezy way to, like, put the name in there. I always thought it was cool when they bring it back to the first name, too. Like, yeah. they, have the, they have a name, and then if they do the montage, they'll bring it back. It'll just say, like, if the you, first name again. You're like, all right, cool. And mm -hmm. if you know, like, anything about editing, you can, like, kind of, like, have it, like, swing in from the side for, like, a quick second out. Yeah. And it's, like, I don't think that's not cool. It just lets Gabe's mom know who's up. You know? mm -hmm. She'd appreciate it, for sure. You know what was cool? Last night in uh, in in Keegan and BMO's video, they, they did a part, and then it said, that was Keegan. And yeah. I, I, I thought was that like, was cool. that's mm -hmm. fucking cool. The title at the end, I'm back in that. Mm -hmm. No, it was... It, the yeah it was the one thing I got confused. I think they did at the end that was Keegan, and then did they do this is Blake? Because it was yep. like Blake's yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Like yep. came there was like a montagey middle section, mm-hmm. and then it was like this is Blake, and then it was kind of like a Blake section. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for a second though, I was confused. I was like, is this man? Mm-hmm. Is it the? Well, I think it depends mm-hmm. on the, how many riders in the video too. Yeah, if there's mm-hmm. four people and they all kind of look different. Mm-hmm. It's like you can definitely tell who's who. Mm-hmm. But yeah. when you have 15 people, yeah, yeah and yeah. then it's like everyone kind of looks away or snowboarding a certain way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. that's way harder to like differentiate. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like how there's like if there's any well. Probably no eighteen year old kids are listening to this, but like the the like they're like, you guys just don't get it, man. It's not about it's not about the titles. I feel it's like it's about the, the art that is happening. <laughs> yeah. in front of well, I feel like like even with Judd's project, like I made it and I was showing it to a couple of people and I was like, there's no graphics, there's nothing. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of the most like pure form of it. Mm-hmm. Like that's like what I made. Like I don't really Right. At the end of the day, you have to put in the logos, you have to like if you you know you spend two years on a video, you can't just like not put mm-hmm. an intro with like mm-hmm. the intro style elements. I also know? think it does a disservice to like if it's a younger kid's project or something. Yeah, and there's a really standout part, mm-hmm. and that kid might be trying to get sponsors or something. Yeah, and like that, a team manager sees the video, they're like, I don't even know who who's who or who to hit up. Yeah, so it's like it's kind of like almost a bummer when the last part is there's no name and it's really sick, but you're like, I don't even know who this was. Yeah. Mm. The thing that's crazy, just like making any, whether YouTube ad or movie, Instagram, it's like there's the level you can take on the filming. Then there's the level you can take on the writing, Mm -hmm. the level you can take on the coloring, Mm -hmm. the audio, Mm -hmm. the music. And then like the last that no one thinks about is your art direction, Mm -hmm. your graphics. Like you can always make it, you can turn like a, pile of shit into like beauty if you got a good graphics guy like you even mean, like, like name, all the like, bomb hole gra- like you guys know what you're doing shout you know? out to like, drake our graphic designer yeah for that. straight out yeah <laughs> so sick are you but, saying like name titles then or like, like just, your name just, titles yeah. are your art direction right yeah, yeah, like, yeah they yeah. should yeah. match the vibe but yep. like i don't know i i was super down with the the watercolor brown mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. i know the meaning behind brown so it's like it's just like mm-hmm. very classy way to do it like simply Mm-hmm. Not overdone, clean, but takes that professional level up so much yeah. rather than just like Helvetica, bold, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. or some shit. Yeah. All right, we interrupt this programming to talk to you guys about a couple of our sponsors. Our first sponsor is Sunbum. Now, even though it's winter, be sure to wear sunscreen because you can still get cooked out there. The sun reflects off the snow. Next thing you know, you are looking like a red-faced drunk out there, but you're not red-faced drunk. You're just sunburned. So make sure that you put sunscreen on in the winter. If you're going to do that, be sure to choose Sunbum. I always use the SPF 50 mineral stick. It's just a little bit bigger than some chapstick. You can keep it in your pocket when you ride and keep your face lubed up and protected from the sun. They also have a killer team. I'm a fan of the entire Sunbum team. They got Parker, Zoom, Steffi Luxton, Jed Anderson, Blake Paul, Jill Perkins, Brian Fox. It's a sun care company that supports snowboarding, so be sure to support them. A lot of people also don't know they make a lot of fantastic products like shampoo. And if we're going to talk shampoo, let's talk about Blake Paul's hair. It glistens beautifully in the sun. A lot of times he snowboards no hat. Just check the lettuce. It's absolutely impeccable, and he uses sun bum shampoo. It's more than just sunscreen. So Sunbum's motto is trust the bum. And if you're interested in picking it up, head to your local surf shop, snowboard shop, or you can find it online at sunbum.com and use promo code THEBOMBHOLE for 15% off your order. All right, let's talk Yeti. Now, it's no secret that Yeti has some of the best gear out there, but when it comes to hydration, they've never had much of a backcountry solution. Well, they fixed that with their new Yonder water bottle. I use it. I love it. It's about 50% lighter than their insulated Rambler water bottles, but it still has that same Yeti toughness that we've all grown to love. The best part, they've got them in four different sizes, so you can pack the bottle perfectly for your backcountry or street or side country adventure. Whatever hydration solution you need, Yeti's got you covered. All right, I'm going to talk to you guys about Capita Snowboards and the board that I rode for all the powder days up at Brighton was the Capita Navigator. I thoroughly enjoyed this thing. First time for me riding a directional board, and it was softer than I anticipated. And the thing I liked about it is I sized up to a bigger board so I had more underneath me, but it was soft and playful and maneuverable. And it's set way back. So this is my first time. I've always been a twin guy, 
kind of ride a more centered stance, getting on a directional navigator, 161 set back. The thing just floated. It was like I was on a boat going through the ocean. I had a great time riding powder on this thing. The thing I like about it is like on a deep powder day, you got no back leg burn and it's big, but it's soft enough to maneuver. You can butter around on it. You can rip turns. Uh, I had a phenomenal time on the Capita Navigator. I actually have a review coming out on it, I think in the next week or two. But if you're interested in a new powder board, I would highly recommend the Capita Navigator. I ordered another one for this year. And if you're interested in checking one out, find it at your local snowboard shop, or of course, you can find it on their website. Okay, beautiful chat, boys. We're going to keep things moving here. We got uh, the self-proclaimed Travis Rice of sales on the line here. Who's, uh, <laughs> his name is Johan Malkowski. Uh, he's the guy on the binding behind Gimby, who you've probably seen on set. I'm going to bring him on air now. Uh, he works for Capita and C3 and all those brands. Uh, we got you on the line, Johan. You here? Yeah, hold on. I, I just had to take a leak. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I saw you call, so that it all of a sudden triggered some some response in the intestines. And just know that while, you know, I was holding it, I was thinking of you, wondering if I was missing a call. There we go. <laughs> all right, Johan, just to start this thing off, why don't you uh, say what your title is and, and what you do? Um, I am a director, uh, North American uh, director of sales for uh, C3, which uh, has the brands Capita Snowboarding, Cole Headwear, and Union Binding Company. And uh, I'm a founding partner of this, so was with us when we started this thing almost 20 years ago to the day we, we've been doing this. Okay, well, I have a topic that comes up all the time. And people like to call me the vice president of sales prevention because uh, we started this business based on the fact that Gumby and I were completely unhirable. So um, <laughs> we had to create a business uh, to, uh, to actually provide a living and uh, provide money for our family. Okay. What's, your, what's your question that you're going to talk about business with? I know Gabe's never worked in the shop or worked in the business. Spencer runs his own business uh, with GoPro, <laughs> and Joe calls me for advice. So right there, the credibility of this uh, panel of dimwits is quite low. So what, what is this, what's this fucking business question that you fucking circle jerks have that you keep trying to tell each other? Okay, well, everybody says that there's no money in snowboarding, and I want to hear what the Travis Rice of sales has to say about it. Well, Travis Rice of sales, you, you're going to go with me on that one, huh? That's self-proclaimed, but um, I didn't say that, you did. Well... Well, I said that to Travis or around, maybe I thought it around Travis. I'm like, <laughs> I wonder if this guy realizes it, you know, while well, he's at some ultra natural, I'm in the ultra natural pits every day with our retailers. <laughs> Joe can attest to that. <laughs> okay. So dropping gnarly lines. Uh, um, gnarly what is it? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do we got? I'm trying to think. Oh. What was your question? All right, well, just take it like this. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it like this. This this will be a this will segue into a great fucking rant. I can tell you right now. So everybody comes in here and we hear that snowboard sales are up, but I, I also hear that rider salaries are down. Go ahead and unload on that. Well, you're only one piece to the marketing pie. You know, riders are tools to sell snowboards and snowboard product, but there's many other avenues that are selling product these days. It's not just it's not athletes. You've got influencers, reviewers, Insta Instagram ads, fucking um, MailChimp stuff that goes out. It's the shops that decide, you know, um, it's a different thing. You're going from a dated model where uh, athletes were the, you know, do all of snowboarding where everyone looked to what they were doing. And that was that's that's what it was. And that's when snowboarding was a was a lifestyle. It's when people. I think was a was a younger younger deal, and people are looking, you know, completely involved in it. And you know, snowboarding is commodity is a commodity these days. It's just an activity for a lot of people, and that's clear by the fact that you've got these jerk off brands like Montec and Dope that are, you know, one of the largest clothing brands on the on the hill. Um, and to take nothing away from professional athletes and what they do, but you know, to find the metrics and the return on investment for them 
is is tough you know where you can see a um a review site someone like uh mark fawcett who owns a small snowboard shop in nelson uh bc you know if he puts out a review we can see we can see what that shit now don't do those fucking clown horns for me no clown horns you know, that's that's something for people in their youth i was born in 1966 i don't i don't need air horns and mark doesn't either uh he knows who he is uh, but when he puts out a review like that we you know, we have a board that, that they did a review and within 24 hours, we're completely sold out of our North American allocation. That's a snowboard that's a thousand dollars. So you can see the metrics on it. There's, there's people searching for stuff. So it's a, it's a different deal. And, and not even to mention the fact that dude, there's no hub in snowboarding to go to for its daily content. There's not one place. There's no magazine. There's no website. There's nothing. You go into mountain bike and you've got pink bike that you can check every day or vital and moto you got racer x or moto action surf has all their shit skate has thrasher and uh what's that other one jenkum that's good everything has a hub that you can go get daily content we don't have shit our magazines the print is so small i can't fucking read them even with my readers and they come out you know there's a magazine that was called frequency but it's pretty infrequent when it comes out so that stuff doesn't show up there's no website to you know to find any content or to sink your teeth into snowboarding. You have to you have to be you know on the on the gram, scrolling through through clips. So, yes, professional snowboards are important to a brand, but not like they were. They're just one piece of the pie, and uh, there's many many parts of that pie that make this this uh, thing this thing roll. Beautifully worded, hey, Johan. I love it. Um, and I think well, a good thing. You know, I've been sitting. At, I, I was sitting in the bathroom, holding myself, thinking of these elegant words for you. That was probably the smartest thing every snowboarder needs to hear. Yeah, yeah, that was great. And yeah. then, uh, so, on a bigger picture, since you kind of see this thing from a three thousand foot view, and not uh, our narrow uh, minded snowboarder's mindset, I mean, how do we? How are we doing? Wait, wait a minute. Wait, am I not a snowboarder? Uh, I've paid, fucking lived paid and breathed this word. thing since 1984 when when I drove up to Manchester Center to, in oh, Vermont. Oh, here, we go. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. I walked up yourself, hills both right? ways. You don't know what it's like. Dude, save it. I, save dude, it, I don't Johan. get paid to do it. I breathe it, though. I fucking live it. Yeah, yeah, we all know that, Johan. Okay, you don't need to go on a pitch about that. But how are we doing as an industry financially? Like, how? What do we need to do culturally? as an industry to stay healthy you know i want to hear some wise words well we're doing it i mean the participation has increased we're like our highest participation we've ever been at since they started recording this stuff they started recording ski and snowboard participation in 1978-79 and um it was like around 50 million skier visits were recorded then and we're at 65 million right now that we did this past year was six percent higher that's just in the USA, six um, percent higher than it was last year. And that's snowboard specific. There's less, ski there's and less brick in that ski and snowboard. And you got to figure that the ratio in North America or USA is like a 60 40, maybe higher in other spots, a 60 ski, 40 snowboard. I got a question for Johan. Can, he, can you hear me, Johan? I can. I'm curious, like, we talk about like, if you look at other professional sports, kids grow up through like middle school and, and they want to be a professional basketball player in the hopes of getting that big contract. And they invest and invest and invest in themselves and their parents invest in whatever camps and things like that to become this and make that big contract and make all that money. Mm -hmm. Is there a thought of like, if that doesn't happen in snowboarding and the most you're ever going to make being a professional snowboarder is, I don't know, 20 grand or whatever we say, it's very low. Does that take the incentive for those kids to like grind and work? And does that whole culture of wanting to be a pro go away and then the bar gets lower and lower and lower and pretty soon we don't have top tier video parts top tier video pros does that worry you or does we that have, like we don't have tar we don't have top tier video parts right now the shit that, that is being put out is so fucking soggy it's gross so my point would Dude, be I fell, I, a, I fell asleep at a video i, I fell asleep that. at a video premiere the other night it was horrible which and, video and uh and a, um it was something from uh 
Dude, I'll say it. Fuck it. The ride video was terrible. <laughs> it was fucking terrible. Because you did it that Brandon. But Davis that's terrible it. from my perspective because it was, it was, it was, it was, dude, it was fucking roll, rollerblading on rails all night. It was 50 50s one way, 50 50s backwards, 50 50s with a helicopter out front side and then a helicopter backside. Oh my God, you did 12 stairs. Ooh, check it out. I did 13. Oh, let's go fucking hug at the end. Who the fucking who the fuck hugs after doing that shit? If you can do it on a skateboard, after, don't after fucking after do it on a snowboard. That's my rule. If you Dude, can it's do called it on a snowboarding. snowboarding. It's not called railboarding. <laughs> Tell that okay. to Sexton and me. Called- <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so I might. Yeah, I'm kind of like we're kind of in our world of that stuff, but like. The question still remains. I get, that's my point. Is if it there's, was possible? Well, no. Pot- there's always. Let gonna, me finish. Yo, just- <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, These I'm microaggressions if, are really triggering. If now. there was the possibility of making a couple hundred grand as a rider, and there was only a certain amount of people doing that, whether it's street or or park, does that become like the incentive? Is like, yeah, you could get that deal, but if it's not out there, then what's the incentive? To work hard and train and do these things to not get there. Well, I think before we go anywhere else, like the rail crew has to actually be like inviting and like, dude, don't if you it's want exclu- a sponsor, don't wear go don't go to the fucking thrift th- shop or whatever. Yeah. Go to Evo, buy a fucking the cheapest jacket you can possibly buy, mm-hmm. rock it. The least logo thing, but maybe it's got like a little Burton logo on the corner. It's got a little something. Yeah, it's a good point. Just do your video part in that. Like, fuck it. Put goggles on your forehead. Like, do something. Like, because you can't mm-hmm. complain. There's no money in it mm-hmm. when you actually don't even. Dude, how about you just? Mm-hmm. How about you snowboard in a snowboarding video instead of, you know, jumping on something and sliding like you're in some fucking um, soap shoes going down a rail <laughs> and like moving your arms all over the place like a windsock. <laughs> like, you got to do something that's relatable to the general public. You guys, the fucking rail dogs, and you know, Joe, I love your longest rail. I love that story. Chris, I love seeing you do, you know, your little fucking kick turn things before the rail, all that stuff. It's great. Okay. But you got to understand the general people, the, the people that snowboard, they're not snowboarders. You guys are making, you guys are making movies to appeal to your own crowd, this own little micro circle. I've been snowboarding since 1984, and I've never once, nor have any of my friends in all these years, ever seen it snow outside and go, holy fuck, dude, what a great day. I think I'm going to go hit that fucking 10 set down the road instead of going to ride powder. Never. I <laughs> work in an office full of people, and while these guys love watching rail movies, none of them go railboarding, okay? You need to make videos that appeal, that, that show why you're a professional. In, in, and that's why fucking Arthur Longo is resonates with everyone. He's writing stuff that's relatable and uh, to everyone, and then he shows why he's a fucking superpower because he boosts ten times higher than every jerk off hitting that same jump. Okay, that's what I think is missing. I think it's. <laughs> that's what the kids in uh, Minnesota really? have to look at, yeah, right? It's an environmental thing. I don't too. think Evan, I don't think Emmett's ever gone street snowboarding once in his life. And I had it sitting in front of me. How many times has he gone? 20, 10, maybe because he's had to and he was filming you guys. But I, I think it's a very small circle that you guys are trying to appeal to. Back that's to a, your question. Right. Let's not get into no. this rail debate because there's going to be a lot of hurt yeah. feelings. Yeah, and you I guys love it. Up fucking hugging each other again. <laughs> and, uh, I don't want right, to do keep that. it moving. Let's actually keep you on something that so, you're a specialist so the, the, in here. The, the, the back, to, back to Joe's question, what she was trying to – yeah, back to Joe's question. Yeah. I think there will always be marquee riders, and there needs to be marquee riders uh, for brands because you got to hang your hat off something. And when they're putting, putting out content that is um, – you know, getting eyes on it and it's relevant and it's, you know, engaging people. These are all buzzwords and marketing terms for you guys. I don't know if you know that. I can list through all of them. Low hanging fruit if you want some of that stuff, these buzzwords. Stay on but, target, um, Johan. They're, yeah, they are people that I think companies need, you know, because you kind of can't hang your hat on or, or hang your brand on me. You can't hang your hat on, you know, stuff like that. You need to hang hang stuff off of a off of a uh, an athlete. But that's at, what I'm saying. You can't really point. hang your you hat off to influencers to either, right? Like only influencers. You no. can't build a team of just influencers. I mean, look, 
I mean, look at Gilson. That's how they build their brand, and it's they, they try to build a community there. What, what you know, brand? hats off to them how they do it. It's Gilson. a brand out of PA. It's a small brand. Mm -hmm. um, Never Summer, same thing. I mean, they don't really have any. Uh, they have Chris Corning, who's you know a launch kid as well that that sends it, but they don't really have any marquee like high high profile riders. But they built you know built a brand there. But it, I don't know, you know, it's respected by shops and respected. I don't know. That's respected by the core. I, like I respect Gilson, them. I, I feel like Gilson and Never Summer, like those are very regional brands. Um, I think it's hard to build a global. Mm, Never Summer is a lot bigger than you think it is. No, totally. But it's. I wouldn't say it's like there with K two, e, like even like a ride or like it's probably on a similar sales as Rad. I would say, but like exposure wise or like brand awareness, I think more people know about Rad. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, it, it, at the, the bottom line, it comes down to making money or not making money. Totally. And those guys could be doing way less and making way more money with with less overhead and less everything. I don't I don't know their metrics or what they're doing, but all right, Johan. Yes, I, I think I think there. I think, but I don't think the pathway is USASA and training to go through things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's what kind of this lifestyle may have gone wrong. I mean, snowboarding was the was what? the anti jock sport, and what? everything you're talking about is complete fucking you're one step away from a puka shell necklace with a fucking ancient shark tooth on hanging from Dude, but what he said okay. like, what he said and why we need like yeah. a fucking snowboard hub is yeah. like when i got into snowboarding like i moved from new york city like my dad skied moguls my mom's like a lawyer like no one knows what a Bump snowboard it is up. i Got yep. in through Rocket Power, but I moved to or I moved to San Diego, California with my mom. Then she gets a brochure for Bear Mountain, like, yo, look, there's a fucking snowboard park top to bottom. Mm -hmm. And then we found out about Mammoth and I go there. And then it was like, okay, like like I was telling earlier before the show, like I was seeing Sean, so it, like I saw half pipes. Yeah. And then it's like I go to Mammoth and there's a snowboard team. And then like I'm I get to be a part of that. Cause like to my mom, it's like my dad's like I'll pay for the snowboard team. And to her, it's like, oh, sick. It's like a soccer team. Sick. The kid goes there. But you learn the USASA route. I mean, that's how I met Gabe and Ben and, like, a lot of the kids that are, like, the guys now. We all did that shit. No one educated me on, like, Hayden Barth's YouTube channel. I didn't know those videos existed or knew those pros were there because I came from outside the industry. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the industry has done a really terrible job at educating the general consumer because the only route that's like viable to like of mom and pop in the middle of nowhere is the USA Olympic route. And they see the Chloe's and the Sean's and the whatever. There needs to be like more awareness for like the Minnesota culture or like where you can do this stuff, different routes you can go. TV, yeah, but why does right? the route always have to be professional? I mean, good, oh, we question. should build a lifestyle. We should, we should build, you know. I think that's my a good, kids went to yeah. my kids. My kids did the launch and they had, you know, a, a pretty goddamn good hookup to get into the industry industry or, you know, be a, be an athlete. If, um, you know, if that was, that's what they desired and they never want to do that. And I, I never wanted that for them. I didn't dream that my kid would be, you know, a professional snowboard. I dream that, you know, at, at my age, I'd still go on snowboard trips and I'm planning a trip with Japan with both of them this year. I go to both face with them. That's, I, I wanted to build a lifestyle and, and, and that because the reality of, and the length of a uh, snowboarding career is small. You know, you got Chris is, he's shucked and jobs all the way through to make what, what's happening happen for him. I mean, this, it's, mm -hmm. it's a fucking hard route. And Joe, you can attest to that. And Gabe, you're in it right now, but you know you're looking around like, okay, what's next? How do I stay relevant? How do I, how do I uh, increase my pay when when budgets are getting cut and they're putting money into uh, YouTubers or influencers or um, gatherings for shops to get you know some cultural stuff where they know the brand a little better. That stuff that this this a value in that, and that those dollars got to come from somewhere, and that's goes you know circles back to why the pie is smaller for for professional athletes because there's other avenues that have a better return or as good of a return and you can't just you don't want to put your your dollars all in one basket mm -hmm. that I mean, makes sense i wouldn't I bring, like uh, did i bring that back yeah like no, gabe's I th got i think something. i i agree like i i'm not gonna 
even if I'm not getting paid, bro, I'm going to still board. That was like my whole family thing is like, we, that's like our family too. I I go ride with my brothers like all the time, you know, that's like my life. So, cause it is. Doesn't that fucking confuse you though? When like a dude stops getting paid to snowboard and he no longer snowboards, like really? So this was, this was just about money to you. That's Mm -hmm. fucking all of a sudden. I don't like the person anymore because I, I remember seeing you and your kids in the launch stuff and like, I mean, riding with them and I did contests. My dad was very like competitive school sports homie. So he was like that growing up. But then like, dude, I don't know. Snowboards. I've been somewhere. I'm 24. I've been somewhere for 20 years. Started when I was four. It's like pretty crazy. Like, yeah. So it's my life. Like I'm always going to do it. And then, yeah, I don't even know what I'm really trying to say. Even if the money's (laughs) not there, bro, I'll go build fences and stuff. Dude, but that's the dopest thing. And I think that's what like, even though like I haven't hit handrails, like I make it at least every time I'm at a spot, hit the spot. Mm -hmm. There's no added value to my net worth, but it's like, it's fucking fun and you're there and you're helping the boys. And it's like, we all, I don't know. And I feel like, or Chris said it yesterday, like snowboarding has like a way of like weaning like people out or whatever. And Mm -hmm. I thought that was cool. It's because it like shows like who's fucking committed. Cause like, I don't know. Well, is is there, is there, is there people weaning them out? Because, you know, Chris, the, the shit that I go crazy on you is, um when you guys you have some guests on and you start talking about like this this uh like underground network of people that are kicking you know in the industry of kicking people out like there's a round table that they're like okay this rider's out let's get them out let's, there's none of that like when when a rider doesn't provide value to its to its brands and they're not they're not giving them anything that they're going to sell more product then they're out and like that's it. That's what your job is. Your job is to provide value. That's the t- it's a tool. Un- it's unfortunate to look at it that way, but that's what it's always been. I think the it's lifestyle thing that. gets lost too, because I think for some reason we've created this like trajectory of it, gets, it starts at getting free product and then it gets factory direct and then it's am team and then it's pro. And if you don't make it to pro team, it's a failure. Yeah. No matter if you had 10 years of an awesome get to go on these cool trips and stuff, but we've presented this thing not like intentionally, but it's like, if you don't make the pro team, then you like failed your career. But it's like, I think what what Johan said is, is huge. Like the lifestyle thing. I don't think kids get their kids and parents get their kids into soccer. Just, they want them to go do that, but they want them to be with their friends and build a community and and do this thing that takes up their time after school. Yeah. And people, but I think the snowboarding thing gets lost where it's like, we want our kids to go snowboarding, but there's, there needs to be an end game here. And it's like, why? Yeah, dude. And I think it gets lost calling it a sport. It gets lost right. calling it a sport because right. a sport's something you do and you you train to play at the highest level. And then when you don't when you when you don't play at that highest level anymore, you kinda walk away. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that happens in football, that happens in soccer, you know, there's club leagues afterwards. But people tend to walk away from sports that they've trained really hard for. And that's where it's going wrong. And that's that's the jock mentality of fuck, I'm gonna train, you know, and uh it needs to be there's a snowboarding is so much more than the act it's sitting on a chairlift it's conversing it's Mm -hmm. it's building relationships it's fuck partying after it's traveling it's it's the journey it's not just the destination it's so much more of snowboarding than the act of snowboarding and you know snowboarding itself is the icing on the cake we Mm -hmm. did a company trip with all of our reps this year to europe to go see our factories and the the whole intention was just to snowboard and call it a sales meeting uh, tell the wives that it was a sales meeting so we could the boys could go away for 10 <laughs> days and uh wreck havoc in in europe and the snow was fucking garbage it was terrible but you know what it was one of the best snowboarding trips i've ever been on to be in the van going from vans going from you know area to area town to town and it was fucking killer and meeting people that's 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 it it's the lifestyle stop calling it a sport Mm-hmm. Yeah, wise Please. words, wise words, Johan. Uh, we got to wrap it up with you, but we got one last question I think you could speak on well. And this is from Andrew Cruz. He wants to know how important is it to companies that their sales reps are out on the road as much as possible getting into shops? That's their job. If they're not doing that, then, then, then they're fired. Clip. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. They're fucking clip. <laughs> Done. Their job. They're the eyes and ears in face of brands out there. They are the relationships with one of someone that I 
you know, that are as important, if not more important than professional riders. A shop kid at a regional and a local level can in influence sales greater than any of you guys in that room. And I, I, I mean that. That's a debatable. key shop kid. <laughs> you got Fuck Gimby. I haven't dude. seen my fucking you YouTube Gimby's, stats, buddy. Gimby shit pops off, brother. You have no idea of my fucking show stats. Right now, are you still on <laughs> Brother, you don't even know if you're still talking <laughs> GoPros, dog. I got live stream guys. I got graphics guys. You don't even know. Uh, hey. I'm telling you, shop kit, shop yeah, kit is shooting in 5K, bro. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got I got tracking links, dude. I know my sales numbers. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Johan, dude, great chat with you. I love Chris. all your points. Oh, what uh, are you going to try to edge in? Ask, here? hey, what are the three things you need to continue to ask? Oh, what? You wrote them down. Oh, you want me why? to ask why? What else? It's in my office. Who, what, where, uh, why? Can you, you elaborate? elaborate? Can you elaborate? He wants me. He's, could you elaborate? He likes to call me and give fucking unsolicited advice all the time. I don't call him and say, hey, Johan, what would you? He just calls and unloads <laughs> about the MJ of snowboarding, <laughs> snowboarding being an art. He's got all this angst about him, and I never ask his opinion ever. Finally, we ask him, and he's just he just projects it on us, you know? <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, that's because I have... I, hey... Can I end it? Can I end? Yeah, it? sure. Wrap, wrap how many it of up. The, how many? How many of the, How many of these clowns sitting in in your thing right there are Patreon supporters? Dude, I'm not a Patreon supporter for um, sure. Probably. I was fifty bucks the, the first out. year, You're and then out. I went broke, dude. <laughs> Holy Give shit! Me one. Broke. At okay. one point, I so paid you six hundred dollars, motherfucker. Are, you guys need. You guys need to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. We sponsor Chris. We sponsor the bomb hall with our companies. But individually in this company, we're all Patreon supporters. You know why? Because it's a cost of a beer. The cost of a beer a month to hear him, you know, maybe two out of four interviews just be fucking stellar and, and incredible. And it's worth that money, <laughs> you know, to fast forward through the other two. Uh, <laughs> You know, you need to pay to play if you want content. Right now, Chris and 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 the crew there, what what you guys are doing at the bomb hole is the only thing that we have our teeth to bite into, uh, or bite our teeth into in snowboarding right now, and it needs to be supported and protected at all costs. So put your fucking money on the line. Put five dollars a month into his little cubby and let him do what he needs to do. All of you, and then amen, anyone listen to this thing, a fucking pony man. the fuck up. Thank you, That's Johan. It. You're yeah, Johan. kind human. Now I gotta go. Hey, now I gotta go back. Johan's to the world my hero. Saving snowboarding, doing business, you know that shit. Joe, you need me to sell anything for you today? Yeah, can you can you, <laughs> can, you, can, you can you plug my brand? What do you got? <laughs> can you plug public? Huh? <laughs> no, I'll I call you for some. I'll call I you think, for some more advice here next week. Appreciate you. I'm a you. big. I'm a big fan of public. Oh yeah, thank good you. Stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. The dude's putting his putting his money where his where his mouth is. We're gonna get it, we're gonna fan. get into that uh, in a little bit. We're gonna dive into public, but uh, Johan, thank you so much for the call. You dropped some some wise words and some uh, some some kind words as well. So thank you for all that. When Scott Stevens come on, let's go. We got nothing left after we get, get the, the Stevens. Get the money shot him. on there. No, nah, we're leaving Stevens off because then we got nothing left to give. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. And it, and it also pisses everybody off, which brings me great enjoyment. Okay. Um, That's true. All right. Uh, thanks, Johan. We're going to let you go. Appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you having me on. All right. Later. See ya. Wow. He's my new favorite person. <laughs> <laughs> He's not afraid to say what he thinks, that's for sure. Yeah, we got a good one on the phone. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. That was fun. I think this is a good segue. We have a um a question from Lance Hacker, and he wants to know how much responsibility does the writer have for their own success in this day and age? Me? Kinda, yeah. All like all the responsibility. Yeah, go, for that, right? go ahead, Gabe. I don't want to go on it. <laughs> I want Gabe to go on this. I yeah, think it's a hundred percent their responsibility. Well, for sure, it's all, it's all on. It's definitely all on you. Like, yeah. But he's saying more like, what should the brand have direction? Like, telling the rider what to do, or should that be more I, of the rider to come up with? I think you their... think about it like high school. When you're an M, they're maybe explaining the lecture slides. They're pointing you in the right direction. They're showing you the chapter in the textbook. When you're a professional and your profit margins outweigh your expenses is what I would call a professional snowboarder. Mm -hmm. If you spend 50 and make 60, mm -hmm. then it's college. They'll give you the money. You maybe they tell you what they want. And then it's up to you to create that direction, to write that essay, to make that 
presentation yep. and do your job. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. how I think of it. I, I love, that's a great point. And I think uh, to elaborate too, in the sense that like the landscape of, of opportunity has changed where back in the day, if you weren't a contest rider, you essentially, if you were in the videos, you, you essentially had to be in a major video to be seen when it was DVDs and things like that, right? So your, your sponsor was really responsible for getting you into the video to get you seen and, and like to get you in the magazines, to have ads. A lot, of, a lot of being put on a pedestal was a part of the sponsor. But I do think we have a little bit more control of our own destiny because you can take your iPhone out and film some wild clips and people like Joe or, you know, brand team managers and marketing managers are going to see those clips and want to hook you up. So I think you are in a little bit more control of your own destiny now than more than ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot more, there's almost more pressure in that because I think the brand is, is expecting you to kind of create your own personal brand too, a little bit where it's like before it was like, you could be misty, mm -hmm. but be filming a three minute video part and come out and the brand can put, Mm -hmm. everything behind that and you could do that and now you don't really have that luxury no and it can make or break you too because you can show too much and be you mm -hmm. can kind of show something weird yeah and you gotta you gotta kind of like be weary of that too because i think people can way too much showing of themselves or way too personal and people might get turned off or mm -hmm. something oh, like yeah. that so i think but i do think it's more like it's a, it's a mixture of both, but I think there's maybe riders looking to like well the brand didn't have a project so i didn't do anything and it's like mm -hmm. well you got to kind of like find your own mm -hmm. little footing in there. And even if it's filming some park stuff or just kind of like staying in front of people, I think is, is pretty important in this day and age. Mm -hmm. I think like the one thing I learned, cause I went to school for three and a half years for finance. Pull and cut, pull your or mic yeah. just a little closer. Yep. Pull it, pull it closer. So you don't bleed. Yep. So let's just start again. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, like I think for me, the most important thing that I learned when I went to school, I went for like three and a half years and then left and it was just making decks. Mm -hmm. Like, they're really easy to make. Like if you make like four different decks, you have four templates. It's the same template every time. Mm -hmm. It's like you're trying to show them what your concept is. Here's like why it's good for you. Here's like how I'm going to do it. This is what you get and this is what it costs. And mm -hmm. like if you can explain that in like seven pages and get really good at it and then it's like six season is wrapped up in April, May, whatever, chill for May, surf, whatever, end of June. Fuck it. You got four sponsors, make four decks. Send them the decks in June, dude. Their mm -hmm. budgets, like they start talking about meetings in August. Like, get ahead of it. Don't be in fucking October, November, like, fuck, dude, we got to get a deck together, whatever. It's like all the money's gone, dude. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. you're, you're saying that goes for people who are like maybe try, like riders trying to maybe do their own project or something, right? Is I think that goes for anybody in the industry that doesn't know how to get money. Like, mm -hmm. start in May. Like, mm -hmm. you're a pro snowboarder till April and you got to film your video part. Yeah. If you just decide that from May to November you're going to chill, yeah, that's okay. But that is called unemployed. You mm -hmm. can't expect to make money being unemployed. Maybe snowboarding. It's like it's not a full time job in the winter. It's like overtime, so you're getting paid one fifty. But then you still get paid twenty five percent this other couple months, and it's like, dude, like, fuck it, like. Work two hours a day, but from like nine to eleven a.m. every single day of the summer, you're like focused on like working on your deck, working on your website, your YouTube, yeah. scheduling Instagram clips. Yep, you're gonna do so much better for yourself, mm -hmm. dude. That like, sounds like Gabe's just Gabe's, sucks, Gabe's schedule. That's just <laughs> annoying and sucks, though. You know, it's like I don't want to do any of that shit. No I just shit. Like live what do you want to do? What do you want to just fucking have a million dollars, Gabe, and fucking fly all the time? Like, guess what? I you don't, don't have bro, snowboarding, don't have though. You have a fucking job, dude. Like, think of my roommates. Like, I live with four working class fucking nine to five people. Mm -hmm. 9 a.m. to 5 a.m., those fuckers are sitting in a seat like this on a computer. Well, do, uh, dude, I, I mean, I have friends that, like, work a job. I know. But, like, be, you know, like, That's if you just life. put two hours, like, you only have to sit in the chair for two hours during the summer. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, like, you're never, bro, you, like, get done with the season. You're I'm never fucking thinking about next season, you know? No shit, because you've never had a job, dude. Like, you've never, like, served, like, be a server for a winter in a resort town. Bro, I've had a job. I've, like... But, like, then why is it so bad to put two hours in on a Monday? I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's annoying. Like, it's just, like, annoying. You know? Yeah, you're like, I don't being a shit. fucking adult is annoying, dude. <laughs> like, you got fucking life to deal with. No shit. It's no shit. Bills are annoying. 
Like, yeah, for sure. let's, the finance I, guy or the guy that computer, they probably don't maybe don't love their shit their job either. None so, of my like, roommates I'll, love their job. Yeah, they fucking hate it. Here's their the job. here's I'm gonna get in and interject this whole fucking thing right now because I think that if every snowboarder was like I'm scheduling posts. I'm doing a YouTube channel, and I'm going all in on everything. Like, I think there's space for everything. Like somebody like Sage, for example, right? Mm -hmm. He is highly paid, highly motivated, and he does a great job being a pro snowboarder. And then you also need your fucking YouTuber who's doing reviews. You need your YouTuber that's going to get people their foot in the door because they're kind of corny and they're appealing to like the the first person's few days of snowboarding or first year. And you also need misty fucking pros that are like cool as fuck that you just kind of like like their vibe as well. Like it, it's an ecosystem that balances itself out. If every single person did what you're talking about, well, no, no, then, everyone, then, but, then but I think yeah. no, but There's what a fine but, line, but no, how you let me be stop real quick because what work, you said you know? that what I meant, yeah, I said put two hours a day, yeah. Mm -hmm. All summer. Mm. Two hours a day, five days a week. Ten hours of work, dude. That's yeah. like one of my work days. Yeah. Mm. Over a week. That's easy. Mm -hmm. You can do it, split it two days, five and five. And Chris, I think this is coming from people who are maybe complaining about not getting theirs, right? Yeah. So yeah. you're saying like, if yeah. you're complaining about it, you're not putting in the two hours of work, then, then it's, you really got no, no And you do not on. have to fucking schedule posts. You don't have to do YouTube. You don't have to be like, call your TM. Mm -hmm. Make a deck. Send an email. Mm -hmm. Like figure, like... Plan, like start thinking about the next year like i every single day for the last five years of my life i write in a journal and like it could be on my computer or paper and i just write the date i write how i'm feeling i write what i want to do the day and i write a to-do list sometimes maybe i write four paragraphs but every day i write in that fucking journal and i have a track of like mm -hmm. where i am mentally you know mm -hmm. but like you could do that two hours a day, fucking five days a week, and your mental health will be so good. Or yeah. physical health. Your you could, physical you health. You could go to the gym. Like, there's things you could do. And a lot of these, some of these kids, like, who are complaining about money aren't working a summer job either. And Dude. it's like, in my eyes, you have so much time off. Dude. It's like, get a fun three day, four day a week summer job. Like, stay busy, make some money. And then there's not as much pressure to make everything just off snowboarding. Dude, and you feel so much better yeah. if you, like, go out and party. But, like, you know, in the morning, yeah. you're like, dude, I, like, did my little breath work thing. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not, like, I have never, like, meditation and stuff has never clicked with me, but it's like, I can do a 20 minute breath work where it's like, that helps me for like in the winter when I'm in a stress situation. Mm -hmm. But I think, like, the thing for me, it's like, I don't want, like, what you said, I do not want every fucking snowboarder to have a YouTube. I don't want that. But I want every snowboarder to put two hours a day into the work week during the summer to make sure snowboarding doesn't fucking die, dude. Mm. Cause like I want to see Brock I, Nielsen's fucking. Burning I want to hear. Bridges, I want to hear. Know? I want to hear Gabe's take on this, dude. I just think there's a fine line. Like I'm down. Like I I love being involved with the companies I ride for. Like I love it. Like I love the people that work there. I'm tight with my K2 homies. I'm tight with the DC homies. Like everything's good, you know. And I do just think there's a fine line of like putting yourself out there on the internet, like, work, like, dude, you, everyone could just be a fucking noob who's, like, selfie video this, selfie video that, YouTube channel this, and I know YouTube's the wave and, like, makes money right now, but, like, dude, there's got to be a little core in, like, a, how you want to be perceived and how you want to be remembered. I don't want to be this sellout guy who's just went to fucking YouTube and Instagram to, like, that was my career. Like, fuck that. I'm going to snowboard forever, so it's, like, why do I even care, you know? But do 100% the shit, do, do the shit that you're into. Like, if that's what yeah. you're into, do it. That's but the you beauty can't of it. not put the two hours a day into like hitting up your TM on the Monday and be like, yo, did you like go to that meeting last week? Like, cool. what were they talking about? I think about? also when I look at Gabe, he's got a great relationship. He nurtures relationships. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, dude, I'm like, I get it. Like, I get it and I get why people are doing this shit. Like, they make money and it fucking, they have mad views and all this shit. But like, but aside from all of that, like, Aside from all views, like, all, like, internet posting, like, I'm saying, like, the one thing that I find consistent among the people who, like, maybe find it hard to get budgets or whatever, it's, like, have you even, like, put 10 hours a week into your job from May 1st until November yeah. 1st? Mm -hmm. Have you put 10 hours a week? Mm -hmm. That's, like, 16 weeks. That's 160 hours. Mm -hmm. But you're just making that sound like your job is to just, like, put yourself out on no 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 like, dude you're taking what i'm saying wrong he's like, saying just like personal work or personal like, or, or work or it could be also. breath yeah. work for two hours oh, yeah, okay. We're it right, could be it. like 
But like taking two hours a day and to think about your career. And taking a little more like yourself and what you're doing a little mm. more serious. He's not yeah, saying no, you need to go sure. do a selfie thing. Dude, you do not. But he's saying yeah. if if that's your lane and that's where you want to go, mm -hmm. then do that and actually put in the work. But like I think what you're saying makes total sense. I think there's a little bit of like uh, – I don't know. It's like a lackadaisical approach. And then, it, like you said, it comes time. Oh, shit. And then I well, we're go. coming off of the golden era. Dude. Mm -hmm. It ain't also, the it ain't the days of three for it, threes anymore. The thing you know? is, is, yeah. they, is yeah. Gabe complaining about anything? No, 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 no. Exactly. no. But yeah, I want to see, thing. dude, it's like, like for chilling. me, yeah. he's doing good. He's like, we're in a but we're you, we got to think because I was thinking about this the other day. Like, think about surfing. It is a little bit old. It's like almost like a generational older than snowboarding and even skateboarding is like. I'd say it's like the half generation in between surf and snowboarding. Snowboarding's pretty fucking new, dude. Like, mm -hmm. we didn't have, like, Gabe's fucking 20 years. Like, mm -hmm. really. Like, we didn't have a dust box 20, 30 years ago. You had Mac Dog and mm -hmm. you, had, mm -hmm. you had film production. So we're in this, like, crazy Wild West. I've been saying it's the 90s. It's a new fucking era. Like, mm -hmm. and I, <laughs> like, I want to be fucking just taking fucking mushrooms and palops with Gabe when I'm fucking 50 and we're just like, how the fuck are we still doing mm -hmm. this? You no, know, like, sure. that's my goal. Like, I want to fucking, like, for me, not in, like, a bad way, but if I fucking die in an avalanche this winter, it's fucking morbid to think about, but every time I fucking go in the backcountry, you got to accept that fucking possibility and you got to do as much work as you can to navigate avoiding that. But if it happens, dude, like... I live the fucking dream. I'm at a fucking table with Chris Grandy's Gabe and Joe Sexton. Like, I never would have thought that could happen. And, like, I think that's the beauty of snowboarding and, like, what Johan was talking about. It's, mm -hmm. like, it's not about the money. It's about those I think fucking everyone's just a different, like, product of your environment and how you come up, you know? Like, you... Because, yeah. dude, I boarded with you so much. And then you stopped boarding and then it seemed... But then you did. You started busting ass and grinding, you know? So, for yeah. you, looking back, you're, that's, like, how it works, you know? Yeah. Like... I think it's just different for everyone. 100%. Yeah. I think it's a great balance of, of all, you know, different flavors for different folks. And it's mm. perfect to talk about all of it. But it's it's also a perfect ecosystem in its own way, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think as long as people aren't complaining about right. budgets that are... It's like if you're... I think what you're, a lot of the stuff that you're describing, too, is like pointed at somebody that would be complaining about budgets or something. And it's like, well, you have opportunities to do this, this, and yeah. this. But I think everybody at this their, this table here is in their own lane, and nobody's really complaining. We're all pretty psyched. Fuck you know? yeah. It's beautiful. Sure. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. I yeah. think in a way, it's just like to compliment like what Johan said yeah. about like maybe the companies like say they got X amount of dollars and it's a pie. Yeah. Th like what I'm saying is like if you're a writer and you want to – learn how to like grow your little slice of the pie mm -hmm. spend good two hours a good, morning good point that's a Just great context think. that's good that's context like to why i said yeah. that that's you know? that's good that that like that ties rounds it out yeah because i think like you started talking and it was about content and then gabe started talking and it was like both of you were at me like i'm saying you need to <laughs> no. fucking go post on youtube that like, was what we, <laughs> I, that's how i heard that that, yeah. that yeah. isn't i'm just saying like think about like if that pie for the riders is smaller and it's growing for the YouTubers and the influencers and every fucking other piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. Just be smart. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe, yeah, fucking a decade ago, you didn't have to. You can mm -hmm. kind of fuck off and get that three for three. You're stoked, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you're a young kid and you're like, fuck, man, like, I can only pull in 15 a year and it's costing 30, mm -hmm. spend those, like, 160 hours in off season and like i mm -hmm. guarantee you'll come out with like mm -hmm. at least being able to break even if you're at that am level i think yeah for sure and like what they're saying to you it's like doesn't feel right to you then don't do it yeah. and no. that's okay no that's totally sure. okay and i think for like i get that bro like if you're a young kid and you want to make some yeah. biscuits like, like i'm not even talking to about do, like you're gonna have to do something. again i think something like you don't need a lot of money to produce greatness like mm -hmm. i don't know who on listening to this has watched alec ostring's void he he made that whole short film for eleven thousand dollars. Like, yeah. you can make eleven thousand dollars if you want to, like in a hundred sixty mm -hmm. hours. And that's yeah, my point. We used point. to make videos mm -hmm. for less than that back in the day too. Yeah. So all right, let's keep it moving here. Uh, we got a couple of good things coming. Uh, Circe is going to be calling talk natural selection in a little bit. We're going to be calling Pat Moore to talk product. We got a bunch of other topics, but right now I think we should check in with Joe. All right, we're going to take a quick break, talk to you guys about Bub's Naturals. They've been a longtime supporter of the show, and the product I use lately on the daily is their hydration packets. It's got over 2,000 milligrams 
of electrolytes. It's called the hydrator dye. They're vegan. They got no added sugar. That's the important thing. No added sugars. That's what separates them from the rest. Non-GMO, soy-free, gluten-free, no artificial colors or flavors. And it's important to stay hydrated, especially in the winter. Now, if you're not hydrated, you're weak, you're tired, you're not feeling like yourself. Now, if you want to go out there and be an elite athlete, you got to stay hydrated. So get yourself some hydrator dye packets. Uh, also, they got their new Bub's Brew Coffee. Uh, I love the combination of getting absolutely jacked up on coffee and hydrated at the same time. So if you're interested in that, head on over to bubsnaturals.com and you can use promo code BOMBHOLE to save 20% off your order. And always remember to support the companies that support snowboarding. All right, we're going to take a quick break and talk to you guys about the Icon Pass because winter is right around the corner. Resorts are about to start opening. They got the Icon Session Pass starting at only $319 adult. The Icon Pass Session 2-day, 3-day, and 4-day pass options offer a range of affordable entry points for the over 50-plus Icon Pass mountains. They also got the Icon Base Pass with limited blackout days across most of the 50-plus mountains. And of course, they got the Icon Pass. Only the Icon Pass provides the most access to the most mountains with no blackout dates. That's every bit of good stuff possible. They got over 178,000 skiable acres across more than 50 destinations worldwide. The good stuff is almost here. Again, from only $319 adult, stay ready with your at Icon Pass to 50 plus destinations worldwide. I've just been like getting mad scared of like flying on planes recently. And I've flown my whole life, but like recently, just like. Don't do this to me. I'm like, me, dude, dude, these things are like, I was on a plane with ashtrays still recently, you know? And I was like, dude, this thing's old. <laughs> like, this thing is sketchy. Like, don't give me one more thing to just be. Have you ever had an Alaskan pilot recently on, yeah, Alaskan Airlines? Uh, uh, he was a pilot and he was on the flight and he was tripping on shrooms. I and saw he tried that. to shut the engines yeah. off on the plane. Like, sketchy shit's happening. I heard under. he was actually on shrooms like days before too and yeah but they still mention it you know there's no way you're still tripping there's no way you're still tripping he had to be doing some crazy yeah. shit like i don't know dude have you ever like taken too many edibles going on to like a long international flight no oh, yeah no i haven't dude i've woke <laughs> up i've woke up literally like in a in a coach seat and i thought i was just like like i was i just like had passed out and then i woke up Cause I fe- I was having a fucking lucid dream that I was we were in a nosedive spiral going towards the ground and I freaking panicked like fully woke up like sweating hot just like almost stood up and I'm like <laughs> I fully thought we were like in a nosedive but that level of fear and like stomach drop is mm-hmm. so gnarly yes. sounds like an everyday uh, occurrence for Joe Sexton just kind of a <laughs> that sounds like what happens state. when I eat an undercooked piece of meat <laughs> my body goes into an absolute spiral absolute so spiral. I I, I can re- I can relate yeah oh, should we whack a fucking- Salt boys, yeah, yeah, let's do it. yeah, I need one, dude. Oh, you got some in front of you here. Take this. No, I've. Okay. Are you gonna do your eyes too? Like, no, I'm not gonna do an eye hit. Silk, start it off. <laughs> an eye hit. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. It's delicious. <laughs> it's so f- <laughs> fucking gnarly if you try and like <laughs> just oh. accept it. Oh, it hits in the eyes. Oh, oh we're good to go. Um, we're back. Run through a wall smelling salts. I kind of bomb hold on. Oh. And it kind of lingers. <laughs> if you did that when you're super hungover in the morning, you could like, I can definitely go. It's a good so. idea. Hell yeah. 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 Gabe, did it work? Up. It worked. But it always gets my left eye. My <laughs> yeah, eyes left eye is cruising it's a left eye on the stream, dude. It's yeah. a full. It's not because you guys are baked. It's because the salts. Just it's clear. the salts. It's salts. It's it's salts. We <laughs> also got, we got a new, uh, we got a three pack of salts called the brick. I think it's on the table somewhere. Oh, yeah. So. The brick is cool. new item. I don't know why you wouldn't buy the brick. Yeah, you save a little money. It's yep. great. Uh, all right, let's get into a little check-in with uh, Joe Sexton here. Uh, what's going on with Public? I just watched uh, Inquire Within. Fill us in, dude. What's happening? There's a lot happening right now. It's It's been a cool, cool time. We, uh, we just delivered our... 23 24 season so we got everything in received and out to shops like earlier than we ever have which is always cool it's like pretty crazy logistical struggle to get stuff you know into your warehouse and we we did it in a pretty timely manner which i'm pretty happy with and uh we have a video that just came out called inquire within eric olson who's a good friend of mine um came from like the panic order days like a young cool kid like uh, like lots of these cool motivated young snowboarders from minnesota 
And he hit me up and he's like, everyone, I'm making this panic movie. Everyone's on a public board. And he's like, so what do you, I was like, we should just make like a public video. Mm -hmm. So it's cool to put something together that wasn't like planned and have it come out the way it did. And Eric killed it. And Pete Crosdale had like the last footage. In Crosdale had some heat. He killed it. Yeah. yeah. So then we just put him on like the AM team and yeah, a lot of cool stuff right now. Like, honestly, it's like a cool moment for, I just feel so lucky to have like the support of, of the retailers, of the reps, of the distributors, customers, mm -hmm. and the riders. Like it's a cool moment. And I'm, I'm really like grateful for kind of where where we're at right now mm -hmm. and it's like still humble and and, and it's ha it's really fun like i'm in there packing the ship and everything and i'm like giddy like it's just a cool feeling so i'm, I'm really i'm really grateful right now nice we got a couple of questions from instagram here uh cult of kona wants to know what can joe share about starting his own business what can you share like like the yeah. like i think it's maybe um it's going to take longer than you think, I think is a, is a pretty good lesson to learn. I think even when I started this thing, it's like, I thought I was going to do this and like launch it and just be ma massive. Cause it's like what you think, you think your world is so big. And it's, I think it takes a long time for, um, people to even know you have a brand. And then it's like, then your product has to be on point and your marketing has to be on point. You got to kind of stay in front of people for a long time. Um, I think that's the thing is, is I could share it. Just keep doing it. Like, if you do a, a t-shirt brand and you do a season and it, it, maybe you don't make as much money as you thought, do it again and again and again and again and again. And just, if you're enjoying it, then there's no reason to stop. But I think people get in their heads, um, even myself sometimes, we've been doing this this long, we should be here, but you are where you are. And if you're enjoying it and you're loving what you're doing, then there's no reason to stop. And I think people can feel that kind of authenticity too. And like for me right now in the brand, I'm, I'm probably the most excited I've been about it even you know, for a long time. And it's just because I just feel lucky that I get to do this and, and we're, we're doing these new shapes and these new boards and, and we're experimenting with stuff and it's, it's a really fun time. So, um, the best thing I could share is like, yeah, it's going to take longer than you think and enjoy every minute of it too. And, and like, you'll look back and be like, holy shit, I can't believe, you know, if you stick with it and it turns into something, you remember those humble beginnings and you're like, damn, like I had a kid yesterday was like, I remember when he had the flyer and it was just like, one a one page of like what it was and we had two boards and it was this whole thing and i was like holy shit that feels like a lifetime ago but i think that was the one thing it's just kept put one in front of the other and another season another season another what season. season you on this is season we just delivered season eight cool yeah amazing Damn. Uh, jp colette wants to know what are the challenges of having a snowboard brand in this climate yeah i think i think that's kind of like the thing like the climate is is balancing what we just talked about. How do you, how do you balance like wanting to support the culture and wanting to like support this retailer side and all these things. Right. And, and especially with a bit smaller budget at, at a scale that I'm at, but I think you just got to go where it makes the most sense and, and you feel the most like authentic with it. You know, I don't think we would, we're going to go like full influencer thing just because that's where the market is. But yeah, there's people out there that are, are awesome and they're, and they're great ambassadors for the brand. And I think you can kind of spread it around and the climate especially is like, we're kind of insulated from that. Cause I think we have sort of like a pretty core kind of, kind of fan base and people that are, um, are really resonate with what we're doing. It might be a smaller group, but I think it's, it's, it's cool to have an effect on a smaller group of people too. Um, and I just hope that people look at public as that brand that they can kind of connect with, you know? And I think when I get a, a DM or a message from someone like that's what fulfills me and that's, what's cool. So you know, obviously I want to grow. I love business and I like growing the business, but I still want to maintain the feeling I get when I get those messages. Cause that's why I started it and that's why I'm doing it. Cool. I like that. Uh, you know, this is another one I think that's interesting. Uh, just not a question, but daddy boom one great handle. He says, I just want to say, Joe, I just want to say thanks to Joe for creating public. The general public is the smoothest board. Mm. That's super cool. Like those are the messages I'm talking about. Like, mm -hmm. and I get like, actual goosebumps still when i hear that shit because it's he could ride any board mm -hmm. and then we're just all we're doing is kind of what what i think is cool and supporting the things that we think is cool and he resonates with that like that's a true kind of cool connection mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. so yeah thank you daddy boom and and i and i like i think that's a big thing too is trying to get the product to a point where you know i just want to give people that option of like this is a rider owned brand this is authentic like i'm putting my own money into this shit like and i feel really proud of that too so when people could support it, they're actually supporting, you know, these these boards and this and this mu this movement a little bit. So yeah, every everything is is very well um, received, and, and I'm really grateful. Mm. Yeah, that's a good that's a good thing to bring kind of consciousness on 
when you spend money on a snowboard, where is it going? And it's cool with rider on brands like Public, it's, it goes to you. And I've heard you, you know, we're, we're close. We spent a lot of time together and hearing things about a lot of people don't understand, like when it comes time to order the boards, right? You got to send a ton of your own money mm-hmm. out to get the boards made. If they don't sell, yeah, you're, you're screwed. Yeah, with hard goods especially, it's a it's a big risk. It's not a it's not t-shirts. It's not a couple boxes of t-shirts. It's it's snowboards that are expensive to make, and so there's a lot of there's a high risk, high reward because I think the barrier of entry is a lot a lot higher. And I, I don't even know. I never planned on having a snowboard company, but now that I'm in this side of it, it's it's really fun. And and I think like, um, but you can do it with anything. Like anyone starting anything, I think there's always going to be risk, and it's just like managing that risk and. And having fun with it. Uh, I got a Tommy Gesme comment here. Uh, he says, "What are your thoughts on the Minnesota Wild this year?" Well, I think the Wild are looking good. I think it's still a rebuilding year. We got some money tied up with Suter and Parisi still. A lot K fan all of a sudden. Uh, no, I just think like I, I, you know I don't know a lot about the inner workings, but I, I just want to. I, I like seeing a little bit of heart. And when they turn on the heart with three minutes left in the third period and they're down by two, I hate that. It's like I want to see that intensity the whole time. Mm-hmm. But they they got a good, uh, they got a little bit better, better organization, and I'm always going to be a fan. So, <laughs> you know, it's Minnesota what, sports. It? Minnesota sports are tough for those who don't know. <laughs> we have a very, it's tough to be a fan <laughs> in Minnesota because o- only game I've ever been to was in Vegas, but they played the Wild and yeah. the Wild won, and it was sick as hell. Yeah, so it's like San like, Diego sports. It just doesn't go anywhere. But I think we're the longest city or state without a championship maybe I, I don't know someone said that fact the other day and you get you vikings get your hopes up and the twins get your hopes up and then they rip your heart out oh, every yeah. single time yeah. so i'm still going to be a fan forever but it's it's funny it's definitely uh the minnesota fans are, are weathered like <laughs> we got some scar tissue for sure <laughs> so your brother was a pro hockey player mm-hmm. and played for the ducks and all that and uh went over to play russia what's what's your bro doing right now he just retired no way. Yeah, no way. he retired from from hockey and I think from from life. He's just <laughs> he's playing golf and and he's in Florida and he's got two awesome kids and a, an awesome wife and he's just he's enjoying life. I talked to him the other day. He's just like I'm just hanging out, working and or working out and I think he's he's doing some cool stuff. But he's just like enjoy. I think that's a grind to be a professional hockey player for that long. I think he's trying to like decompress a little bit. But I'm super proud of him and he had a really awesome career and he's on to the next chapter. Cool. Well, we're going to take a call from Searcy Wallace here in a second. But before we get into that, we got one more topic that I think is interesting. This is from Jordan Hamilton. He says, what are your thoughts on relative rail jams and finding the next generation? Is that to me? I mean, Joe, you're a rail guy. Let's start with you. What's a relative rail jam? Uh, like a a relevant. Jam? Relevant. Did I say relative? Relevant. Relevant. What are my thoughts? Say it again. What are my thoughts on a relevant? What are your thoughts on a relevant rail jam? Let's just start with that. Like, what are your thoughts on rail jams? Just, just let's just start with that. I think they're cool. I think that's what I grew up looking at. Like, you know, Nixon Jib Fest was a huge one, and that was a little bit more private. But like Vans Cup and these things, like, I, I think they're they're cool, and they can they can build people's kind of careers if they win some of those. Like Lucas Magoon, remember in those days, and Casanova mm-hmm. and Simone Chamberlain. Like, that's how they kind of got their their start. Um, mm-hmm. I think they're awesome. I think they're they're a cool way to showcase what's going on, and and I think like. Yeah, I hope there's more of them because, again, I just think anything that draws attention to snowboarding and even, like, street snowboarding and maybe putting it, making it look cool is going to help kind of the overall good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah, so cool going to that uh, event in uh, Detroit last year. Yeah. And it's like there's a crowd of, seems like, thousands of people coming to watch people slide down our handrail. That was cool, and that's, like, I was fortunate enough to be a part of that one, the Red Bull Heavy Metal, and, uh, and it was awesome to have you guys. But to see that lineup of people who – you know, it's kind of like dirt biking where it's just mm-hmm. so to people who don't really do that, it just looks so out of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. that's what makes it interesting. And it's like, it's really cool to see. Dude, mm-hmm. the PBR day used to be like, mm-hmm. on, like, or at least for me, like growing up when you don't really like know where's a lane, it's like Volcom's having a contest. Like, I don't know. I grew up like the Volcom stone was like pretty like, yeah, you had that on your board. Like mm-hmm. that was pretty fucked. If you even had mm-hmm. like a real stone. Totally. And like, but when they would come in, like, I, like I feel like that contest like helped me even 100%. get connected with like Billy Anderson, which yep. was the first person that flowed me any gear. Yep. And it's like I know like Brandon Davis. Like yep. there's a lot of people that grew up through those, and like Mammoth used to do mm-hmm. like the, what was it the West Coast Invitational yeah, that was, WCI? That's yeah, yeah, that's a huge one. Like San Diego mm-hmm. had one, like a San Diego. Yeah. Like yeah, I mean it was like. 
Yeah, I just think I grew up in an era where, like, yeah, there was, like, a rail jam at Big Bear, Mountain High, or Mammoth, like, or San Diego, at least, like, And then there's a band a playing, and there's, like, mm. merch tents, and it's a cool it's a cool vibe. And it ha- sometimes they happen in the off-season when there's not as much going on. Like, I think that's, that's great. And it know? gives people exposure exactly. to, like, yeah. maybe what they yep. wouldn't see that's going on in the Midwest or something. That was the big thing with Detroit. It was, like, people living in that hub who just, like, walked in, and they're just like, holy shit, <laughs> there's this whole other side of snowboarding, which I yeah. think is cool. And I think in person, it's it's pretty impressive when you're looking at how fast it actually is and how scary this stuff is in the slams and you're watching it in real you got time. Yeah, Zeb Powell it's, doing like yeah. hand plants. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. cool as fuck if you're like a little kid. I remember going to it, Real Jams. I was going to say. And they were like sick as hell, like watching. I would <laughs> Kyle Martin, I felt like was always winning Real Jams in bed <laughs> for some reason. But <laughs> we, so what, we, what was little young bobblehead Gabe serving up? The 50 front three? What, are we, what were you hitting? <laughs> Dude, no, I... I'm going to sketch it real. I just try to find like a jump, do a backflip or something. <laughs> <laughs> Probably win with that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think also I no. like the one thing just to kind of highlight what you guys said as well is rail jams are really important regionally. Like I grew up in Massachusetts on the East Coast. There's not much of a scene. You know, we that's all we really had to get our foot in the door to meet reps, to meet people. So it's great opportunities for someone that's unknown to get their first shine. And even for me, like I remember I won a, the East coast invitation. I think it was like the AM division. And then I got to go to the Vail session and then I competed at the Vail session, you know, when I was a kid and it's like Sean White's there doing the first run with all four nines and shit. And you're like, it's just a crazy, you know, it's a great stepping stone. And, and, you know, I've, I've had a lot of like opportunities as a kid because, you know, I got signed with Solomon. I won a contest called hometown heroes in Colorado and then Hava became the Solomon team manager, and he was working at Copper at the time. And it's like, you know, I I I can single handedly say that Rail Jams have helped me get my foot in the door a hundred percent. So I think they're actually great for the culture of snowboarding. Bomb yeah. hole cut plug. <laughs> yeah, bomb hole. Well, hey, I even got the, out in the jam on that yeah, one. Yeah, Mando good. Cab Nine. <laughs> yeah, that was Cab, but I got bodied on a switchback lip. I got <laughs> yeah, like a yeah, concussion, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> all right, dude, I need to like not be here. Cooper was putting it down. Though. Mm-hmm. Or like That's Dogfight, like, where you did that, and it was like you brought in some locals from the area. Like, I think it's cool. Like, And you're like, who's that dude? And then they're in a video the next yep. year. And I like. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good, not like a, an intentional stepping stone, but it's yep. cool to see. You know? Totally. Yeah, yeah, we actually all, this is a good opportunity to plug an event. We have January 6th at, at uh, Woodward, and it's a ride day rail jam. The first half of the day, everybody's lapping together. The second half, we're going to have an open all ability levels rail jam, and then we'll have a pro rail jam. We'll have a band. We'll have the limo. We'll have food. Everybody's hanging out in this one area, and it'll just be a fun little community deal. That's awesome. Everybody shows up in Chuck. So You got a name for that? Uh, I, you know, I like explanatory names so people actually know what it is. So we're just calling it bomb hole ride day and rail jam. Oh, so like people that. are like, Oh, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Instead yeah, of some yeah. shit you got to decipher. All right. We're going to take a call here from Circe Wallace, a uh, super agent of our sport also works with natural selection. <laughs> and she is, uh, she's here to announce some stuff about natural selection this year. What's going on, Sears? How are we doing? I'm good. Hello, Bombhole family and friends. Happy to be here and excited to talk about this season. Yeah. What do we got on the docket? Well, you heard it here first. You're actually the first uh, public-facing announcement. So uh, I am excited to announce that we have uh, actually a lot to share today. Um, one of the biggest of changes that you're going to see this year is we're starting off with a new all global location based dual format where there will soon to be announced the 12 challengers that are coming to compete for six spots on the 2024 tour you will see that we have a larger field this year um, and we have some really fun duels locations that include Andermatt and Switzerland which is our first European based event uh, Crested Butte Mountain Resort 11 Scarp Ridge Lodge outside of Irwin, Colorado, Purgatory Snowcat Adventures in Durango, Colorado, uh, Red Mountain Resort in Rosslyn, BC, and then Somewhere Amazing in Japan, which we will be announcing soon. Um, And then essentially we are taking the winners of those duels on to the final events, which are going to include two live days in the Revelstoke area, March 10th through 17th. 
Uh, we will have a 24 rider field this year. The tour is then running for two full live event days, one at the Yeti Natural Selection Revelstoke Mountain Resort, and then Yeti Natural Selection Selkirk Tangiers. Uh, T Selkirk Tangiers Heli Skiing, which, as you are probably familiar from last year, provides some of the most challenging and majestic uh, range that we have ever been able to host an event. So very exciting, much like last year's venue, but different location. So expect some of the same um, extreme environments that we saw last year. <laughs> And then uh, the second day, Revelstoke Mountain Resort, which is a more freestyle-oriented venue, which will be uh, filled with naturally enhanced features, bringing back a more freestyle-oriented course like what we've done historically. Um, and then we are uh, announcing the the duels uh, through a cadence of comms. So please follow us on Instagram for announcements on that. And we are bringing back all 12 riders who competed in Revy last year. So Zoe, Travis, Blake, Elena, Kimmy, Haley, Jared, Torstein, Mikey C, Mikael, Ben, and Dustin. Um, and yeah, we are working hard to make sure that we keep outdoing ourselves because I think it's going to be challenging given how incredible last year was. So two live event days, I think, are setting us up nicely for an even more um, action-packed week. Nice. Good job. Love hearing that. I think the live events really make for an added degree of excitement. So that's that's killer. Yeah, it's very exciting. And I think, you know, we're constantly trying to evolve. Um, and the opportunity for us to expand to some of these regional dual locations is very exciting. We have a lot of support from our partners um, and expanding on that. And we're very excited about also adding those um, Japan and European stops. Yeah, I like that it sounds like it's a little bit more of a controlled environment with cat skiing ops as opposed to kind of Wild West uh, snowmobile choose-your-own-adventure situation, right? Exactly, yeah. We have more resources and certainly an ability to create more controlled environments. Cool. And so just to be... And, and better content, right? A absolutely. And then to be clear on the the duels, so are there there'll be new names as well in the duels or all returning? New names. Yeah, so you're going to announce those. Those are still secret. They are. Okay. And we'll keep you guessing and hopefully coming back for those announcements because that's part invite? of the, are you guys the gonna fun invite? cadence. Uh, Cersei, is I this the Travis time you tell Travis. me that I'm in? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Gimbal in. <laughs> is it Gimbal versus Gimbal? Gimbal <laughs> versus Thank you, dude. Joe Sexton, I'm actually. so happy. I'm going to bring a I on. mean... I think we do need an industry challenge. So. I think you need to check yeah, Sage's I know last Travis YouTube shorts. I got, I got stuff. Yeah, on there, <laughs> you should, you should have like the media, the media guy challenge. You know, like, like I can go against. I Stan can beat. Or I can beat Nigro, dude. Yeah. I can beat Nigro. Yeah. I think that's actually a really good idea. I think that we we, we need to put that into action. Or that's you know cool. what you could do? You could have like a civilian go down the course for reference and just watch them just savagely tomahawk so you kind of have a gauge on how <laughs> aggressive it is. You know what I mean? You could send Sexton. Sexton could be like your, your civilian that's like, wow, this is really hard. Here, we're going to send Joe. He's going to just he's gonna ragdoll down this entire pillow line. It's steep. It's steep, guys. Just heads up. It's definitely pretty steep. Up civilian there. report. It's <laughs> fucked up. You do not want to go down I haven't up. seen a rail yet yet but i'm looking oh. and uh not seeing one but. Oh. Uh, i think that would bring much comic relief because yeah. i think we front were really runner, on the edge of front, our seats we got front year. runner joe sexton here on velvet cakes he's about to drop in and uh he'll give us a report when he's at the bottom he's on a 148 that hasn't been waxed but uh it should be good <laughs> There is so many bomb holes. This course is now unrideable. We're going to have to shut down uh, here. Yes, that is an ongoing concern. <laughs> Liam, we need a third day. We need a third day. Five birds. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, well, you know, we leave it to Trav. We'll end up with a third day. So mm-hmm. cool. bring it. Well, we're excited. Bring uh, it. Did you did you say the dates for the Revy? Or is that still to be announced and I missed it? Or what? Yeah, it's 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 March 10th through 17th. So expect two live days in that window. Respect the weather window and waiting for it's good. Mm-hmm. That is a that's a great uh, that's a page out of Surfing's book, really, right? Thank you. Yes, it's true. Hmm. And I mean, you know, given environmental factors, it it's the only way it works, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you know, there have been times when we've gotten like proper resets. So, fortunately, we're in two different venues, so that's not an issue, but. Wanting to make sure we've got best weather for production. Well, cool. Um, that's an exciting announcement. So you're, thanks for calling and yeah. uh, filling us in on that. I think the listeners will be Tru- excited for truly that. Truly my pleasure. It sounds really Yeah, cool. it's, it, it's, uh, an, it's an exciting advancement, and we really enjoy bringing um, this to all of our friends and family and snowboard enthusiasts and always looking for a level up and I think we've come up with a plan that is going to ensure further excitement and um, please tune in. Cool. Well, appreciate you, Sears. Um, Thanks for calling in and uh, yeah, looking forward to some more updates as you guys announce the the riders for the duels. Okay. Thanks to you all and uh, pray for snow. Okay. Thanks, Sears. Appreciate you. We'll talk to you. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Right. Sweet, that was awesome. Um, yeah, super cool. I was thinking the whole time, Gabe, we got to talk about you and Colonel Kotz's legendary battle. <laughs> One for the ages. Yeah, he took me out. Are you still feeling salty about that, or have you kind of come to terms with it? I know it's no, been a couple I've, of years. I've come to terms. You have? Yeah. <laughs> Not salty at all. You know what was great is it was the whole like Bend versus like Utah like there was beef, dude. That was bad though. We got smoked by him. Yeah, it was kind of. It was like Ben and and like the whole Burton crew with Gabe, and then it was like me and Jerm with Sage. <laughs> <laughs> I had money riding on Sage, so I was actually, I stood, I stood with Sage on that. That's so fucking whack, dude. Yeah, it worked, I made some money. It was great. Well, and, he, dude, it's kind of nice when you do get beat by the guy who wins the mm-hmm. whole event. And then you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Lost to the guy who won. Didn't no, you, you were in the best spot on that day. You yeah. Know? That's you know, it. the best thing ever was the meme of, like, Calvin and Hobbes pissing on Ben. <laughs> you remember that? Uh, dude, I don't know if I remember that one, but after I got beat, I was, like, pretty lit that night because I had nothing going on. And I would, like, go outside and just yell, Gutenberg! <laughs> <laughs> like, we were just filming, like, yelling that. And then it happened to Ben and Jared, so then we were all, like, Gutenberg! Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, Sage is a bit of a a target on his back these days for that one. Yeah. He's got to look over his shoulder and bend, huh? Yeah, well, well, we used to film with him. That happens. Haven't really filmed with him since. Mm -hmm. We haven't really talked about it, but maybe there is some shit. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's some beef. We need more beef in snowboarding. (laughs) Love some good beef. Okay, uh, I think it's a good time to get into Nitro Turbo Takes. What do you think, Silk? Let's run it up. All right, so the concept here, guys, is be quick with your answers. Like, keep it under 30 seconds. Don't go on some, like, six-minute rant. It's, they're called Turbo Takes for a reason. Welcome to Nitro Turbo Takes. Brought to you by Nitro Snowboards and Kindu Eliasson. All right, guys, Nitro Turbo Takes. Let's keep it short, okay? Okay. First question's for Joe. Oh. What was your first snowboard shop that you hung out in? Cal Surf, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Chris, how will kids buy snowboards in 10 years from now? Bitcoin. <laughs> All right, Gimble God, <laughs> what does it take to make a good snowboard film? F- fun? You get. I mean, you don't have to say one <laughs> word. These are these are ultra turbo. Everyone got everyone got kind of turbo on me though. All but right, I think you, you got to have a good time. You got to have a good crew. You got to be safe. There it is. All right, Gabe. What's up with half pipe these days? Did you ever think the level would be this high? Uh yeah, it's mad fucked up. Levels high. Not going back. <laughs> 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 All right, we got another one for Gabe. How important is a video part or project for the current and future culture of snowboarding? Uh, mad important. Hopefully, we we want to hope. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, keep I, them running. Keep running them up. All right, Joe. 
Why are snowboard brands owned and run by snowboarders so important to the future of snowboarding? I don't know. It's the, I think it's the natural progression of, of what we're doing. I think you could look at skate and stuff like that. And the guys that were pros have gone on to run brands. And I think it's, you understand what the riders are going through. You understand a little bit more of the inner workings of it being a rider and on that side and then running a company, you, you start to see both sides and that's good and bad. Cause it's like, I want to give, you know, you want to help out and do these things, but you understand that there's, there's like, there's restrictions too. So I think, uh, it's important because it's like, it's authentic and it's like, you know, you come from a, you, we were a rider and now you're running a brand. Yeah. The culture should be run by snowboarding. Snowboarders mm -hmm. should be running snowboarding. Mm -hmm. All right. This one's for Chris favorite nickname in snowboarding. Oh shit. That's easy, dude. <laughs> you already know. It's our boy. Young Dolly. Oh, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> Young Dolly? He's named after a fucking Dolly? Like, uh, for filming? Like, he's making fun of a Dolly shots? <laughs> Easily best nickname. <laughs> All right, Gimbal God, does Sponsor Me tapes work? I mean, they didn't really work for me, to be honest. Gabe, who has the best part in brown? Uh... Eco backs room. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, All right, good. Joe, can you explain a classic <laughs> kit crisis when you're going to film at a spot? Oh, absolutely. It's when you put on an outfit and you feel really good and then you walk down the stairs <laughs> or someone vibes you or you look in the mirror and it just doesn't feel right. And then you usually have to change and you just wait until it really feels really good. And only you know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. So that's a classic kit crisis. Mm -hmm. All right, Gimbal God, how would you convince a person who has never snowboarded before to give it a try? Um, I'd show them the video, Snowboarding's More Fun with Your Friends, on my YouTube. Plug that shit. Mm. Nice. <laughs> very, very sleek. Joe, last question. Why should someone buy from a snowboard shop instead of directly from a brand? I think you're getting an experience with the shop. You're going to have like a cool you know, rapport with the shop. They're going to help you find the right board for you. It may not be the brand you walked in looking for, but it's they're going to find the right product, the right brand for you. You have an experience and someone to go back to to service it and and you know, hopefully build that over time, support them by buying some shoes and you just you build a whole a relationship with it, you know. And I think you get that direct with the brand as well and you're supporting the company, but it's equally as important to support the shops who who also support the brands. And that's it. Nice. Oh, he's good. Great little seggy there. Good answers, guys. So you're not going back to the pipe, Gabe? Uh, no, maybe tomorrow I'm, like, down, you know? Mm, today, <laughs> that's how you're feeling. You, know, you never know. You know what I watched the other day that got me super hyped? I think it was Quasimodo where Baden did the cab 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got me hyped. I think me, Baden, and Gabe need to have a cab 10 off, and I got to learn it because I've never done it in the pipe, but you got to do one and Baden's got to do one, and then I might try. Dude, Dude Gabe, you got that. Shit. Gabe, you got that all day. Th that'd be a still, good video, I still though. Think you know? I got the cab ten. My shit is just like a cab ten these days is like a seven to those kids. Not you know? for us, dude. Not for us. Though. Not yeah, for us, man. What That's about the double Michael Chuck? I think I got that one too. You did that recently. You did that for fleeting time. Mm -hmm. Batchy pipe. Yeah. First time. Yeah, it was dope because it was batchy pipe. You got to yeah. shout Luke Metroni out on that one. Mm. Yeah, that was always the shit. Yeah, he, he was like the first one to make that one like pretty gnarly. He always just did well, it first hit. It would go huge. And it, it was, like looked. It was crazy, yeah, dude. It was just like, what are you fun. doing, dude? And like, then you think so about sick. Mike Michael Chuck. Mm -hmm. and dude, Tech Diff. He was launching those in the little, I guess it was 18s when Luke was doing them. Yeah. Too. Still in the 18s. Well, and then they were just like, yeah, Mike, fuck you. That was whack, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he was fun. Fun to watch. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's keep things moving here. I think it's a good thing to get into uh, talking about the media landscape of snowboarding. We touched on it earlier, but I know, uh, I think Gimby's got some takes on this stuff. But um, yeah, like the where we're at in controlling the media, whether it's YouTubers versus produced snowboard videos, do you have a take, Gimby? I mean, it's like where you want to start, you know, like I think in the or what we were talking about with Joe, like what's the difference in rider owned brands, right? It's that it's a fucking snowboarder making the business decisions on the brand. I think the bomb hole baller, like you guys are the biggest media platform in snowboarding. Like 
whatever way you want to say it, like this conversation we've had today, like it's not live, but like from what I've heard, I think it's super important for like, if you're a kid looking to go into snowboarding, you're thinking about it, you're on the fence, maybe you ski, I don't know. You hear this, like this is like a good foundation for you. There's other places on YouTube, yes, to learn how to turn, to do an unweighted down curve that I don't even fucking know what that means. But like you can go <laughs> learning how to do that and have a good time snowboarding and it'll be sick. But if you want to like actually support the people who fucking do it, you should listen to a show like this. And I think that's that's where we're at. We It's the fucking 90s, dude. It's the Wild West. You use whatever fucking song you want on YouTube. You could do whatever you want. You could fucking ride pow all day. You could ride rails all day. You could ride dry slope. You can hit a fucking airbag and fucking do nine backflips into a fucking plastic sheet of thing in Japan. Like, do whatever you fucking <laughs> nine want. Nine backflips. But, like, snowboarding's, like, it's, it, it's like, it, it, like, started, it exploded, and then it's, like, we're, like, fucking in a nuclear waste center. Like, what the fuck are we doing, dude? We don't have magazines. There's no trans world. There's no snowboarder. We got slush. We got torment, method, pleasure all the like it's just like where the fuck are we dude you know i think that's the beauty and like i mean for me it's like i think this night in snowboarding super fucking important because like i honestly don't know the brown crew that well but like i really respect brock nielsen's viewpoint and i don't even really know him but i've heard good things and like legend mm -hmm. if legend. anyone is listening to this like brock had a pretty sick kind of like thing he that torment put up on his viewpoint of like his movie and was it like the be becoming brown like how butters came up kind of like thing yeah it was like yeah, that video was really dude sick. but uh, like i watched that and i was like that i'm laughing because i've been i've just been busy but i've been wanting to make a video like that and i think brock mm -hmm. was actually the best way you could have ever made a video like that but like the thing that resonated with me with that is that like if it if it's not a fuck yes it's a fuck no like mm -hmm. everybody's got to stay in their lane and you got to do you but like i think creating a hub and snowboarding like and i think it's the bomb hole right now because we're having a conversation like this but like there needs to be somebody fucking making decisions like i don't want to see a fucking slush rider of the year and then a fucking torment rider of the year there's fucking one rider of the year and it's like what it is and that's hurting us if you guys pick different people you know like mm -hmm. we all got to fucking come together and there's got to be like something to celebrate all this cool shit we're fucking watching mm -hmm. like or like even last night like mm -hmm. that was some of the like heaviest pound for pound street <laughs> snowboarding i've seen in a minute mm -hmm. yeah i agree mm -hmm. riley nickerson good, good. switchback lip fuck Good yeah. stuff. Yeah, G shit yeah. stuff is so sick. Yeah, that video, the 686 video Atlas is incredible. Gesme's footage is incredible. Forest. Um, but yeah, going back to what you said, I think about the media landscape too. I just, I want to say one thing is like, I got the new Slush magazine and flipped through it. And I was like, dude, we need magazines. Magazines are fucking awesome. Like mm -hmm. Torment comes out tonight. It'll be out by the time this episode's out. Excited to thumb through it. And and in terms of content, like it's it is fragmented in these different areas. But I was talking to Stark last night and he's like, every 48 hours from now till Christmas, we are releasing a new snowboard video. And so like there is things coming out on the internet, you know, like if you think about it, I think Holden Barthu works for us. He counted there's like over 30 videos releasing this year. Mm -hmm. And it and it's just like it's it's confusing because where do you find all of them? They're all on different channels, right? Holden but then, Barth's YouTube. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he said Hayden <laughs> or fucking Hayden Barth's YouTube. No, it's no, it's hold, it's, it's Holden. Yeah, Holden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, interesting stuff. What are your what's your take on this stuff, Joe? Um, my take is it's tough, right? Because there's skating, there's there's Thrasher. And then there's other like orbiting magazines and stuff, but they seem to be like the guiding voice of what's really going on. And I think snowboarding has so many different like categories of it. Skating in Thrasher is it's street skating. And there's some maybe they highlight some pipe stuff every or like half pipe stuff every once in a while. I'd say there's, there's bowl too, like like there's Chris, bowl for sure. Like yeah. they do like like the masher series and stuff. But like. I think there's not as much of a disconnect of like street snowboarding and backcountry as there is mm -hmm. snowboarding there's such a disconnect mm -hmm. and like torment you know sometimes maybe it would look like a street snowboarding thing mm -hmm. slush is definitely a little bit more like all mountain free ride and so the frequency is way up with all mountain and free riding and stuff like that mm -hmm. um 
So I think they all have their place, but I've also been like, man, I, there, I wish there kind of was that guiding voice, but it's too hard. Cause I think everyone has their own lanes that they're interested in. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the way I see it. And I think a kid, you know, just speaking for like Minnesota street snowboarding, like they're looking at torment. They're looking at mm-hmm. that the dudes that dress that they like, and they're riding the features that they like. And then the Northwest, they're probably looking at frequency and things like that. So it's good and bad. I, I kind of agree with like, the, the so many different riders of the year. Like, I think that that's, what's cool about Thrasher, like skater of the year. Mm-hmm. And that means so much. And people just go out and try to get that. I mean, you get Sody like, yeah, it's a big, big you got Sody mm-hmm. like, and I think, and I don't know that this, I don't even know the stats on if this has happened with the past. I think this is just, we're all so new. Cause like, not that torment's new, but it's like, I feel like this 23, 24 season is like super instrumental in the fact that like torment's been run like what it's issue six tonight. They're on at year seven, I think, mm-hmm. but it's the release number six oh, yep. it, tonight. Yep. So they got six years under the belt. Slush is four, four, about four, you know, like in, in just speaking for like, from my own experience, like I started my business in 2015. So I'm like on year eight. And, like, I still haven't made a profit, per se. Like, I'm losing money because I'm reinvesting, right? And that's, like, where these companies are at. They're, like, trying to figure out, like, how the fuck do we, like, navigate the next decade, right? Mm -hmm. I think this season's super instrumental in, like, you know, like, what we're going to look at or, like, who we're going to look at, you know, next year this time. I think, and back to my, like, you know, saying work two hours a day. It could be on whatever you want. But I think, like, as a snowboarder, like, Dude, we're at ground zero right now. Like, it's up to you. And it's up to the magazines. Mm. It's up to the bomb hole. It's up to it's up to every individual to be the best version of yourself because your success is responsible on you and yourself only. I think that's a good point. Yeah. I think that's different too, because like when we grew up, that wasn't or like other industries, it's they're very established. So you're just kind of going off what it's weird to be in that position to be like, wow, it really is up to like these people to like shape what this looks like. I mean, you're the sickest like example of it, right? Like, cause Gabe was a bit later. I would say, like, I would say you were it more a prime or like, we're like, I wouldn't even, I think Gabe is like at the very beginning of like what his peak could be. Mm -hmm. And I think like you in that position was like it an era that like, yeah, it was like, yo, we're doing this. Like, yo, come. Yeah. here's the dates like be here on this time it was like that for sure and it's not yeah. like that and yep. i think that's when i said my two hours a morning it's like that's why it, you have to do that now because it's mm. that's not there yeah yeah and back then it felt i mean chris you know like oh, yeah. it was a little bit more like i wouldn't say pressure but way more professionalism like you're showing up for this catalog shoot you're showing up for this like there was a lot more of a kind of a job aspect mm-hmm. to it you know and, and inversely though before social media you did some contests you did your mm-hmm. video part. Nobody knew what, like, the little morsels you got behind the scene were, like, a YouTube day in the life or, or like, there was, you know, before Instagram, it was kind of nice because you did your part, and then you could kick your feet up all summer yeah. and just chill, you know? And and so I think it's changed in being your own kind of boss and having to post and do things like that. But uh, I kind of wanted to change gears and just thinking about YouTube and videos, and I was thinking about Brown. And so you have... YouTube and you have some of this like kind of like more you throw it at a wall let's just put it out let's just keep feeding the internet right which I love I love the stuff you make I consume Mark Mix vl- like vlog type of stuff I've always been a consumer of like kind of all snowboard content and then you have your smaller videos but I really love the big kind of blockbuster snowboard videos like Brown and I totally disagree with what Johan said about Ride I think Ride's a fucking incredible video and uh like Brown you know, I got a sneak peek on it, and it's like the attention to detail and every little, there's so much intent behind everything of capturing Gabe's personality. And, you know, he's going out there and he's he's conceptualizing these these little things like, you know, Scott Blum likes to ride dirt bikes. So he went and filmed Blum 16 millimeter dirt biking, and he took a full day just for a fucking half a second clip. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's those little details of somebody that puts two years into a project and then we have this blockbuster long format mm-hmm. snowboard video that we're anticipating is is important and also the vlogs and the instagrams and the and the tiktoks or whatever are also important but i 
again, that's my take is that we need fucking all of it. Well, the number one thing snowboarding needs to do is build a platform. Yeah. So, yeah. like, even if you make that big blockbuster movie, that's cool. Gets fucking 10K views. <clears throat> I mean, that's where it's hard to, like, go to, you know, I'm just looking at Brown, and if I was making the deck for that, I'd be looking at, like, a North Face, and I'd be looking at Rockstar. And, like, if it gets 10K views and you spent, let's say, a two-year movie, like, I'm just going to gamble that thing costs 200 grand. It's hard for them to give you 200 grand if like it got 10,000 views. So like you need to have a space to put that film in order where it's going to get seen by kids because like for me that's I mean of all the movies that are coming out like Brown is the thing that I want to see the most because I know Brock's attention to detail without knowing him I know the people in it. It's going to be the best snowboard vibe for what snowboarding should be in my opinion that's where i think like like from a vibe perspective i haven't seen it, anything and i think that but like i want that video needs to have like five fucking million views you know what i mean like it needs that but there's nowhere like back in the day it's like if you made a fucking day in the life at copper and gave it to trans world snowboarding in 2008 50k views tuesday morning mm -hmm. Like, that's why YouTube's so important and we can't be letting these, like, other people that maybe slipped in on, like, where we were kind of, like, all of us kind of recovering from the magazine era and everybody, like, like, it was in COVID, like, it was, like, dude, like, a lot of my friends, like, got cut and, like, didn't have money during COVID or, like, a lot of, like, I lost a lot of money during that. Like, we all kind of had to navigate, like... Remember that bomb hole started in COVID. Like, I was like, what the hell are these fuckers doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, I was telling Granny, we're in a freaking, we're in a business. <laughs> we're, in a, we're in a business suite in Salt Lake City, which is, I mean, that's incredible what, like, a snowboarder can do. And, like, same with yourself, Joe. Like, you have a fucking snowboard company. <laughs> like, there's only <laughs> so many people that I can name on my hand right here who have a snowboard company in 2023. Like, that was a rider, like, within a decade. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, I think it's up to us, right. To build that platform. I think, I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but like, it would be fucking gangster if there was like, yo, the Brown movie comes out and you know, that thing's slapping a million, like fucking a week. And it's For like, sure. yo, Mateus pony the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Straight up. No, it would be fresh as hell. You just never know. You know, I don't even know where it's going out, but I do know, bro, that like butters Brock Nielsen is DG like he cares about how you look so much yeah. like it's actually like so refreshing to film with a dude like that and just hang out with him and like all of his shit and then this movie is just so important because we are like we're good ass homies so we're showing that it's like bro it's it's like you go out there and you try to fucking catch some air and get rad but like you're just having so much fun it's about the whole journey and the friendship and shit too you know it's yeah. like mad special that's mm -hmm. so sick well into that too if you guys are doing YouTube vlogs and it's brown the whole time. That doesn't make sense, right? I think the, <laughs> the excitement for this is the fact that it's been pretty misty. Good point. And then there's Good a teaser point. that comes out and there's a lot of like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, Good like point. I think that's a huge part of it, which is like that has its place right there. Mm -hmm. And I think like the thing that everyone forgets on YouTube is like, dude, you don't have to like do shit every day and then edit it every day and film. You just have to suck up one year mm. of being misty. Cause like with brown, if, I don't know. I don't even know anyone really that's like in like the helm of that. But if you were to just interview each one of you guys for fucking in here, whatever, mm -hmm. and then overlay the footage and tell the story of your experience of like the part mm -hmm. and like put that on Brown's Dude, YouTube, yeah. no, like that, I want to, I need to see that. And then it's like, if you do it smart where you pay, you know, like say you want to fucking, you know, Led Zeppelin tune or whatever but like you can't afford it and you want to make some money pay the dude who can kind of like rip give mike rav fucking 500 bucks to fucking rip a tune throw that as the audio on it you own the copyrights you put it on youtube you got this sick gangster 20 minute piece you make 10 of them you're ad revving you on that maybe you hit a fucking hundred bucks guess what that's a couple burritos for the boys like you can fucking <laughs> you know what i mean like you can like mm -hmm. 
there's more you it's gotta be misty for interesting a year interesting listening to you talk about it because you got it all like broken down and dialed you know like i've never heard well it's like dude i want to know now. like what it feels like to be gabe on brown but you're looking at it through you a, know your finance background which is cool because that's a different view- viewpoint which I think is awesome. I just think the thing that it, it costs fucking money For to sure. make snowboard videos. Yeah, like yeah. It's so expensive. Like mm-hmm. the hardest part of making Tor Gear and Judd's films have literally, like I've been done editing them like two months ago. Mm-hmm. Like I've been editing both of them for like, Judd's 18 months and Tor Gear's a year. So like everyone like in May was like, oh, are you like, you know, excited to like be, it's like, dude, they're done. Like mm-hmm. I need a, mm-hmm. I need nine shots. And mm-hmm. I know where those nine shots are going to come and I'll be done in September. Mm. But like, then it's like, dude, like for, you know, take for Judd's project and tour gears, like monster energy benefits, Oakley benefits. But like for my brands, like GoPro and battalion, like they kind of suffered last winter because like, dude, like I cannot focus on myself when I commit to working with someone like tour gear. Judd's my little brother. He's like the puppy we're fucking dragging around, you know? Like, but Torgir, like when you work with a dude like that and he expects to film something that could be video part of the year, or could be the best thing he's ever created in his career. Like, I have to act like that. And like my fucking TikTok fucking slash and backflip ain't fucking important. And like it, I think that's important for like if you want to be a filmmaker in this thing, like you got to like go toe to toe with your rider on work ethic because like, dude, like backcountry, I thought it would be so much easier than it is. Like even to move your tripod location, dude, like that means I got to put this 30 pound camera on my backpack, on my backpack, hike over here, go up that ridge. Like that takes endurance, you know, like, Mm -hmm. and like, but you got to be down if fucking, you know, like if Gabe's like, yo, like, I think it would be dope over there. Mm-hmm. Like you would be bummed on a filmer that's just like, yo, like I'm over it. Yeah, no. Or for you're sure. telling the you filmer to go where to with go. the right people. Jonah Elston, bro. Yeah, he'll get you anywhere you want to go. Best the tur- drone yeah. pilot. Yeah, is that the drone tur- pilot? Oh, oh yeah, he's uh, uh, Jared's older brother. Actual he, drone footage. Dr- actual drone. Actual footage. drone footage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He filmed yeah. 16. Like he got the whole play down by Jake Price too. So I think, dude, he's yeah, be a gangster, he's like a like. Jake Price prodigy. <laughs> but he's like, you need those dudes because you're like Jonah. Can you get me up there? And he's like, yep. He'll just like step away from his camera. He'll be wearing shades, hair out, and he'll just... He's run. a neck. You, you, and you don't even have to lean with him because he's that good at ripping. You know, you just grab on and jump off at the top. Like Everyone so who's ever DM me and asked like, yo, how do I get into the industry? How do I get into snowboarding? Blah, blah, blah. Learn how to fucking snowmobile mm-hmm. and take a first aid class. You're the mm-hmm. fucking top <laughs> asset in the world. Like the filmers. filming part, dude, yeah. here's the tripod. I'll set you like Gabe can probably freaking set the angle like yeah. click the button but if you can freaking like double someone up onto Break that trail. ledge and like yeah. set you in the spot like mm-hmm. that's like and that's just what's gotta valuable be, like you do have to find the right people that are hyped like dude i got to film with shane charlebois a oh, little bit this best. year yeah and i didn't know him at all and then after one week with that dude i was like this is the sickest dude ever mm-hmm. like he he does. He loves it more than you. Like you oh, know, yeah. he's loving it the most. Like he's mm-hmm. the most hyped to be out. There. And he's killing it, dude. And yeah, and he just kills it. He's super hyped. He's like, oh yeah, this looks mad fun. This looks yeah. fun. You'll hit like a a little turn and a little air, and he was like, dude, that's the sickest thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, no, it's not. Like, <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> filmed Jeffy seen, back in the yeah, day. Like, yeah. You've seen everything. Like, yeah, definitely not. But like, he's just the best fucking. Yeah, dude. like the one thing dude, I love need of- those people, or else, dude, like you can. I don't know. I'll go on a trip in like four days in. You've been sledding. You've maybe hit like two things. You're like, get fucking over it fast. And I'll be a dick to like, I'll like turn on Nick and Jerry, be a dick for an afternoon. And then I'm always looking like <laughs> trying to just be on Shane's mentality because it's like, bro, you're out there just having fun. Mm-hmm. I think the hardest part is like, like I, I've never been more like mentally, physically, just like emotionally exhausted than like the last winter because like it is, dude, like. Mm-hmm. Dude, like, you'll just drive and sled for a week for like maybe a clip. Like you're spending money. Hotel wake up at four a.m. and you could and you could vlog the whole thing and throw it up on YouTube. But that ain't the real shit. If you're fucking doing it, you don't have fucking time to vlog. Yeah, and like it, I it think seems, it's crazy. But that's what's like where the interview, like just to interview Gabe for thirty minutes, like and just overlay all those like weirdo lifestyles you'd never use or mm-hmm. iPhone clips. 
then you like complete the package mm -hmm. and yeah. it's like fuck like those brown kids like fuck yeah mm -hmm. like i want to be those guys but sometimes when you just see the action it's like like we or johan was saying like it's unrelatable to ride on rails but like you know if you tell the story about how really cheap it is to like ride rails on a snowboard mm -hmm. Hell of a lot cheaper if you live in Minnesota than like even contemplating like doing what Gabe did like last winter, you know. Totally, mm -hmm. no, for sure. Like, so, and and also the other thing is like if you think about a general consumer that doesn't understand. Even when I was a kid, I didn't understand. I was like, why does Devin Walsh have lost part in technical difficulties? He doesn't hit any rails. Yeah. And now I watch it, I'm like, wow, you know. But thinking about that's a that's a lot of people's experience. You can hop on. The Gram or TikTok, you can watch Marcus Cleveland do a Nolly Todio 1440 films like Gimbal God style off the lip. And you're just like, holy shit, I have a jump in my local park. Yeah. And yeah. and so it's an interesting to connect the dots from, you know, as like Craig Kelly paved the way for us as backcountry being the pinnacle of snowboarding and bringing the people that see the the Marcus Cleveland clip and then making them understand that the the backcountry line with no lip natty back seven is kind of fucking it, you know? Well, it's like, like you but, said, it was, yeah, like Craig built this thing, Snowboarder and Trans World did too, and then it was it kind of just like literally <laughs> water balloons yeah. that, and like were the water droplets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exploded. I like it. Mm -hmm. You're just a product of your environment. Though, yeah. You know? Like, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I guess Northwest though too. Northwest has always had deep roots for you in terms of like powder being and shit like that. Yeah. Like, it was like, we didn't even ride the park at all. We just kind of go rip how it seemed. So it was always kind of, there's like, not just going to do this park shit. And then I just never really liked rails. Like when I did sub style contests, I was so bad at rails, dude. You didn't it. even like half pipe at the end there. I remember our, our oh, yeah. week with Benny Bright and Baden, yeah. the last contest. The last contest. <laughs> the last contest. The last Baden's contest. in locks in like a hotel room solo. Gabe's in his room and like I'm randomly there. <laughs> and like that was the last contest. Mm -hmm. That was the last Dude, contest. Dude, that was my last contest. I straight up did like two front fives and a couple lip slides. And yeah. And I was like, I am done over this. But it's so dope that you like that. And I think mm -hmm. what like Gabe just said and did is what like – if you're like in the age range of 10 to 18 and you're debating on whether you want to do anything in life, mm -hmm. do what your fucking fucking gut yeah, is. Like, do it. Gut. Don't like if homies over here, like, dude, you need to be a contest X, Y, and Z. And that's how you get X. It's like, mm -hmm. nah, nah, if you're feeling this way, go that way. Mm -hmm. That was mad funny. Cause Nick was mad over it too. And then, yeah, we were calling it, we were like smoking cigs and drinking in his room. And we were calling it CD, just contest depression. Yeah. <laughs> that was the city. But like, yeah. honestly, that was looking back on my career, like, that was probably my favorite contest. Cause like, Nick Baden, at the time, it was like kind of rare if he was there. And I don't even know uh -huh. why he was there. But he was the sickest. Cause like, if he did land a run, it was like fire. And it was like, boom, finals, you know? Dude, I mean, like, the, so the run I filmed of Baden in practice, mm -hmm. no bib. Like, that's that run probably has like over 5 million views mm -hmm. in total, like from YouTube to Instagram. Like, mm -hmm. people, like, Baden looks nice on it. Like, Oh yeah, it's the, the one it's, where he jumps off of the top, right? Is like, yeah, thing? he yeah. he's just like it the very borderline where it's like so sketchy that it could look bad, but he's like got that like finesse on just how his arm goes back, where it's like, no, mm. that was supposed to be there, you know, like, and it's just uh, that's the best snowboard. Cool. It's sporadic, and, and then also thinking about that with contests too, it's like Gabe's now riding powder, but he chucked roast in the pipe and got his tricks down at slope style contest and now the homie goes to tee up a front nine and it's fucking all day brother dude you say that but i didn't lay into front nine that day <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> said the, uh, into the, the lake show, you were like dude those front nines i was like yeah didn't land a single one dude you you g'd out at the bottom but you stomped if you didn't hit the g out <laughs> yeah i know um i wish i did slope style longer because now i'm hitting the backcountry booters all the time and i'm like fuck i wish i had some more tricks because yeah. now it's like just trying shit. I think backcountry, what like every kid doesn't realize, it's like the culmination of all your snowboarding. Mm -hmm. Like I think personally, like half pipe teaches you edge control, like how to like use all those weird little feet muscles to like stay on your edge. Rail riding teaches you to like 
commit. Do not like Dude, if you're gonna sweat. try a back one on, do not try to swivel it on uh, a fucking street right. Like mm. do the one eighty. It's better that way. Tommy, yeah. that's like how he split his head open exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You're committed. <laughs> yeah. You but if you commit in the rails, if you learn the weird little fucking edge techniques in the half pipe and then you learn all the tricks on the jump, you'll usually see that the best dudes in the backcountry can they're adaptable on on it all, you know, like mm -hmm. like they like you can you need to do a back ten on a park jump, you could. If you need to do a double cork in the pipe, you could. And that's why I think like when you read like Natty Select versus Sage, like that was like a toe to toe. It wasn't like Sage kicked Gabe's ass. It yeah. was like that was like a point one. Like it was like it could be fuck, debatable. Yeah. Like whose was it? You know, and like I think that's the thing with snowboarding. Like it's a judge sport. If you want to win, like like don't be scared to win. Just fucking like put it down where no one can do it. And I think it was so cool to see like Sage and Gabe do that. And then it was like, fuck, like kind of sucked for Gabe. Cause it was like, he rode so good, maybe better than other heats. But like, it's also like, it's what contests are. It's like, it was, no, a, for sure. it's still a good showing, you know? Oh no, for sure. Um, I was just like, uh, it just sucked not riding that the next day. It's just like good publicity, you know? Fuck yeah, it is. Dope Fuck yeah, it is. Day. And then I was out for the whole last year. So yeah. when we were talking to Searcy, like I had to send some footage to T-Bird, see if I'll get in. Oh, a little sponsor me tape to try to get in? Yeah, try to maybe get they in. Do <laughs> work. Maybe, so maybe they do work. So maybe they do work. Yeah. Have, you, work. have you heard anything? I haven't heard anything. I don't think There's anyone's so heard anything. so many good people, bro. It's like... No, nah, Gabe's got to be in about, it, I agree 100%. I was watching uh, the video last night uh, with... with um, Bimo, dude, Bimo would Bimo Bimo would up. fuck up natural selection. He would fuck it up because he's got tricks and he's like mad natty good. Didn't he win the freestyle world? Yeah, tour? he won the like free red world tour. Yeah. Free, yeah, he knows dude, he like is insane. But I think I mean the toughest part of natty select, right? Like, like it'd be sick if they could do it U.S. Open style with a hundred people. But I think like what like the average like just from me working there, right? Like I've I've gone to work for GoPro, but like I've had to help with like the overall production and it's like dude it's like the gnarliest thing to like like dude like surfing like go set up a live stream at pipeline like there's like like i don't know i haven't been to like hawaii a ton but like within like five miles there's like a plug you know to plug in a thing <laughs> yeah. Like we're taking a helicopter True. of gear and people uh, to yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. the middle of fucking yeah. nowhere and <laughs> yeah. like running live streams to Santa Monica to do this. And then you got daylight and it's like, even if we like every two minutes drop somebody, we can only drop a hundred people, which means at most we could have like 30 or you could have 45 people take two runs, you know, like mm. you're so time constricted and then you add the weather window and then you add yeah. like the amount of money it costs. So it's like, dude, the fact they're even doing a 24 person tour this year, that's fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. Like that's like in like, I think I really hope NST succeeds because I mean, that provides like straight up if, if Travis is right, and fucking this works like Gabe, <laughs> Gabe has an extra 10 years on his career. Like, like, mm -hmm. and that is what, you know, like, dude, yeah, no. And it's like something to like work for and like look forward to, you know? Yeah. You got like, it's not like just filming. Well, cause filming will I'm not saying it'll always be there, but like, you know, if I don't get in, it's like, at least right now it's like, Oh, I'll just go film. Look at the 12 people mentioned like, Craven. Yeah. Craven's like yeah, in, he's in. He doesn't have to fuck Dude, with duels. There's yeah. OGs like I think Austin Smith would like fuck up natural yeah. selection too. Yeah. Oh yeah. If he if he lands. Yeah. Which dude he's a sweeten good at landing on his feet. Yeah. Dude, there's so many. It's endless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we gotta keep things moving here. Good talk. Um we got a call coming up from uh Pat Moore here in a little bit to talk product. One last thing before we move on this, and I've, I've had this take, I think I've said it publicly, and Gimby, I'd like to pick your brain on this because I feel as though, like, if you compare snowboarding to other quote-unquote sports or whatever you want to call it, we we have a small people, like a group of people that actually consider themselves snowboarders that consume content, that make it a lifestyle. Like, for example, Supercross goes around, they fill stadiums after stadium after stadium of people that show up to watch these races, you know? Like, our most viewed YouTube short we have is Twitch, and he's a moto guy, mm -hmm. you know? And we're a snowboard podcast. 
And so like, and if you look at, you know, you have F1, that's huge and like regular conventional sports. And then you have F1 and then you have, you know, super cross and then you have, you know, skateboarding and then even below skateboarding, you have, you have snowboarding. And so I think going back to the things you were saying earlier, it'd be interesting to get your take because my, my take with the, the, you know, getting a million, 10 million views on Brown is that, you know, our core audience is just not as big as we think it is? Or am I, like, you're, I mean, your YouTube fucks shit up. Am I out of line for thinking that? No, like, snowboarding is super tiny. And, yeah. like, I think that's what, and, like, that's a, that's a hard thing in making content, right? Like, um, when I started with Stale, for example, like, I made him a pitch deck, and it was like, yo, I'm going to, like, increase your socials by, like, X amount. And, like, I think I can do this based off my understanding. I'd interned at Snowboarder. I had a pretty good idea from like the Snowboarder Mag Instagram account of like knowing the analytics behind that. Like at the time, like that was, that was the biggest, that was the biggest example of like what a snowboard account was. So I had an idea of that. They had a bunch of followers, right? Over a Milski. When I was there, like and had access to the account, it was like 1.4 million. Mm Mm-hmm. And that was at the same time that I was Spencer Whiting. Mm -hmm. And then I interned there all year. Bro, you're still Spencer Whiting. (laughs) No, but on Instagram, that was like, (laughs) that was like, that was like, I didn't even, I didn't even have, I backed that. No, but like, I, I didn't, because it wasn't until I started interning there that like Carlino even called me Gimbal God. Mm -hmm. But then it was like, when I started my account, I started to see the impression difference between my account and Snowboarder Mag. And Mm -hmm. you start to get a pretty good consensus, right, of like how many people are even in snowboarding. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I'm going to say is it's like a really fucking tiny amount of people, you know, like Mm -hmm. in the scheme of things, like, dude, like if you sell 250,000 units, like that is nothing. Like for like an Apple or like even take like a, I don't know, like a mountain bike company, like, dude, like everybody rides a bicycle. Like, I don't know the numbers on their bikes, but I guarantee it's probably more than the amount of snowboards, you know, like it, like an overall bike company, not a model. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think it's, uh, it's like tough where we're at because there's, you know, if we kind of talked about on the show, there's so many different lanes and like, we're all, you know, as sick as it would be to get five mil on brown on like a palm hole youtube or torment or brown cinema like i don't know how many people want to watch 16 millimeter like just lifeies and snowboarding and like whatever like i don't know what the market for that is for some crazy reason the market of like talking into a camera it's just like i think like there's a human like element that like grabs your attention more and like to a like general audience it like captures their attention you know like i like all of my videos like we've done pretty good the last two months but like dude like it (laughs) it doesn't make what it costs you know like to to do it at that level i'm losing money still Mm. like it's not like a business you know what the beauty of it is though that thing that that's great about the whole thing is that companies like nike and companies like adidas they come into snowboarding they're like i'm gonna make a bunch of money they don't make any fucking money they pull out and all that goes away. And then like snowboarding weeds itself out to the only people that are fucking left are the ones that love it. And that's kind of the beauty of it with people like Joe. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? (laughs) That is, I mean, that is the (laughs) sickest way to like full circle why you should fucking support rider owned companies. You know, I mean, that's the, yeah, it's true. And I think that, all those people think it's bigger than it is and they come in and yeah, what's left is people who really just care. Like what Johan said, the lifestyle of it all. Like I think about it too. Like if Brown, you know, gets however many views, they're dedicated views to like watching fucking what we do. And it's not like if it gets 5 million, it might be fucking every other thing and some algorithm. And it's like, what's that really affecting? So I think, you know, even with yourself, like getting the views that you get, those are like dedicated fucking organic views on people who might go buy a Stale product or something like that, right? The, the most interesting thing with my YouTube was I had one pop that I posted a short in January. And as I restarted to post stuff in August, it popped. 
Mm-hmm. And I think like we're at, it's at like 12 mil views and there's like 2.7K comments, 458,000 likes. So wow. this is like a good example of a post that like all of the world saw and no one knows what the fuck is going on. And it's just like, it's Kevin Sansalone doing a burp test at Baldface, and like go in the what? comment section of that for 10 minutes. And you realize how out of touch the general public is with snowboarding. Mm-hmm. Like most of the people yeah. that saw that for whatever reason, the YouTube algorithm put it at Florida. And like, there's a lot of people from Florida the Netherlands, and that one's weird because hmm. I was in the Netherlands when this video was popping and I started getting Netherlands comments. So I was like, I wonder if YouTube's like tracking where my phone is and like sending, but it was like those views were, or those comments were weird. But like, I think that was like a good example of a post that like most normal people saw and they don't know what the fuck we're doing, dude. Mm-hmm. They have no idea. Yeah. Do you want to appeal to like a big group that d- is just like cool and then they click on like, a football video and then it's just like yeah. goes away. Like I think it's to me, it's a little bit more like narrowed if it's like, yeah, I know Brown, I know Gabe mm-hmm. and I'm watching this and I might go buy a K2 board now because yeah. mm-hmm. Gabe looked sick. Like if it gets to this giant ring and people are just like, well, these guys flying off stuff. They're not even snowboarders. They're no. not going to buy anything. Mm-hmm. So no. it's like, it does good for the ego. Great yeah. view, view count for sure. But it would be, it's great if it translates into, it's like, like wrangling them in though. It's like, yeah, yeah. yo, this is dope. If mm-hmm. we show you a little bit more, maybe you'll check out the bomb hole. Right. Or like, right, you know, right. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, like, cause that's business is yep. like just getting those people into your funnel. Dude, and yeah. that's what YouTube, that's what Will Axe is great for, you know, and people like that. They, mm-hmm. they, they, they discover snowboarding, they find the YouTuber, and then they find the next thing and next thing, and then they end up at Torment or Gimbal God or whatever. But mm-hmm. we're going to get, uh, we're going to take a quick break and do an ad block, and then we'll be back with a, interview with pat moore to talk some product stuff all right we're gonna talk snacks and we're talking hippies now these are chips that are made with chickpeas and let me tell you here at the bomb hole we hammer these things at an alarming rate because they're friggin' delicious and the one thing about healthy food it's not always delicious sometimes it feels like you're chewing on a piece of bark not hippies they're good and they're good for you they're made with they're made with chickpeas They're packed full of flavor. I'm a big fan, as you can see, of the nacho vibes. It feels like you're eating an unhealthy chip, but it's a healthy chip. It's non-GMO. So if you're interested in picking up some healthy snacks, head on over to hippies.com or your local grocery store, and you can use promo code BOMBHOLE for 20% off at hippies.com. Again, promo code BOMBHOLE, 20% off, and you can start hammering hippies at an alarming rate, just like us. All right, let's talk Oakley. Everybody knows Oakley makes great goggles, great outerwear. Now, I just saw they launched the Team Collection outerwear. I saw a Stolly Sandbox new kit. It's looking fresh. Obviously, Sage, a.k.a. Colonel Kotzenberg, has got a fresh kit. Uh, They also have their new innovation on the Mod 3 helmet. This thing is an incredible helmet. Um, Got a chance to test it out. Really like it. Also would recommend the Mod 1 Pro helmet if you're looking for a helmet. Uh, They also have Oakley Community Days. Don't have the dates for that yet, but be sure to check out Oakley Community Days if you're looking for a fun event. And uh, yeah, all in all, if you're looking for some great goggles, check out Oakley's Line Miner Pros. All right, let's talk bindings. We're going to talk about union bindings specifically. I ride them. I love them. They got the iconic U logo on the back, which is just clean. Thing I love about them, nice medium flex, buttery smooth ratchets. Everybody knows Union makes great bindings. All the way from Travis Rice ability level to a beginner. The Force Classics will get you covered. Uh, They just work great. And it's trusted by more professional snowboarders than any other binding on the market. Designed, engineered, and tested in Italy. Backed by lifetime warranty on the base plates and heel cups. And today we're doing a fun giveaway. So on the thumbnail photo for this episode, group chat episode three on Instagram, tag a friend who needs a new pair of bindings. Maybe you leave a reason why. We'll scroll through and we'll send you a pair of the Union Forces, black or white, any size. We'll send you the right ones. Uh, we'll pick a we'll pick a winner before Wednesday of next week. And uh, yeah, 
tag a friend. And if you're interested in purchasing some union bindings, obviously go on to unionbindingcompany.com or always support your local snowboard shop where they probably have unions as well. All right, we got some exciting stuff happening right now. We're about to bring in Pat Moore. He's got a new uh, board company called Candle he's launching and uh, been developing some new products. Also recently a, a dad, which is exciting. Uh, Patrick, how are you doing, my friend? Uh, good. Uh, hey, I'm just changing a diaper. Um, I call you right back. <laughs> what's you that? don't want to know what's on my hands. <laughs> call stevens it sounds like a regular phone call with stevens too <laughs> <laughs> no doing good yeah um and uh chris uh it's not a board brand but thank you um uh collection under uh, under arbor thank you for clarifying collection yeah, under well, arbor <laughs> you obviously obviously didn't do any due diligence so appreciate it that's how we run it we run a loose operation over here pat stay on your toes <laughs> All right, so so Phil. Well, yeah, you got Fat Gabe in there, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something about Fat Gabe. He's a little banged up from last night. He's a bit of a shell of a human today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is true. Good, good. At least, yeah, you know, you got to do it for us, us old heads, Gabe. You got to um, keep it going. I'm trying. Yeah, thank you for your service, Gabe. Yeah, they, we got to. We're yeah. we're warming back up into another one for tonight, so it's gonna be good. Yep. Nice. That's good. You got the the cool Ferguson in the uh, in the booth. Oh, thank you, wow. Pat. That yeah. is nice. <laughs> Damn. Ben. <laughs> All right. Fired on Ben. Fill yeah. us in, fill us in on Candle the collection under Arbor, not the board company. To be very clear, fill us in on this new collection. <laughs> yeah, it was um, you know, really just uh, this rad opportunity that came up through Arbor and kind of to, for me to like get to design and create a whole line of boards um, that, you know, is kind of the idea was it was going to be similar to like uh, an Unink or, uh, you know, the, the Nitro Quiver series, but I kind of wanted to just do it in my own way. So it's, it's going to be a full collection of uh, kind of freestyle oriented boards Um and this first board, the rain, uh, is, you know, what we're kicking it off with, which is a full just ATV board. And um, so been been having a lot of fun just like nerding out on boards and uh, and also just inspiration. I mean, so much has happened in snowboarding over, you know, my whole career. And, and so many people have done so many like rad things. And this has been a, a cool chance for me to like, I don't know, build something from the ground up. Killer. Now, I, I would love to hear in regards to specific tech and shape and, you know, you were talking about radius side cuts and stuff yesterday and things like that. Um, and our audience just creams their jeans over that stuff. And so I'd just love you to kind of break down, you know, where your head was from the design process of this, this for, first board that you just mentioned. Uh, yeah, I mean, my kind of a thought process in the beginning was, uh, you know, I took inspiration from a bunch of boards uh, that are currently out there. But honestly, the one that I kept going back to uh, was the old Forum Destroyer that I rode uh, for, I don't know, like eight to 10 years in a row. It was, uh, it was a great board. That was more of like a true twin board. Um, but basically, I wanted to take the idea that was the destroyer and kind of modernize it. Uh, so that's what we did. We brought in a lot of, um, of Arbor's technology, like their parabolic cambering. Um, you know, we brought in these kind of cool uh, dual radius tip and tail um, that have, it, it just has like a rad look and it also gives you a little bit no more uh, nose and tail height. Um, so we just, yeah, we, really want to just create like a, an ATV killer and, and kind of get the collection started from there and, and, um, and then start, you know, expanding out into specific type of types of snowboards from here. And then, so you mentioned, uh, the, the camber profile on that. I'd love to hear you dive into that a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the simplest way to think about it is like, a radial camber uh, would be basically using 
the shape of a single uh, circle. Um, so you, you know, you have uh, for a lot of the camber boards kind of in the past, uh, that radial uh, camber really, it kind of created a setup where it was great. It gave you a lot of pop and everything, but your contact points would, would dive into the snow pretty hard. Um, so that was an issue for a long time. And what uh, George Kant and the crew at Arbor uh, created was uh, parabolic cambering, um, which they, they use basically, I think it's five circles. And what that does is it, it puts the camera in the center of the board and then it gradually tapers off as it gets to the tip and tail. Um, so basically you're getting the same pop that you would from a traditional camber, but you're not getting that same dive at the contact points um, compared to like a radial um, camber. So the idea with that for this board specifically in like what the intention behind using it was to have the pop. Um, but you know, I ride powder primarily. So I wanted to have something that, that floated really well. So, um, just that having that, that combination of, you know, a solid camera board that pops, but also has good float. Um, so that's kind of, kind of the gist of parabolic cambering. Wow, you must know your shit. You described that pretty well, Pat. I'm impressed. Can't, yeah, you don't want to ask Joe about any camber profiles over at Public. It's a, it would be a train wreck. <laughs> it would be a train wreck. Pat, exactly the same thing over at Public. A lot of radial camber, and you know, basically exact, exactly what you said is what we're doing. So, well, yep. you, you yeah. mentioned something interesting too, talking about you know the Forum Destroyer and snowboard technology has come a long way in the past ten years. Um, it would be interesting to hear, like specifically what ways snowboard technology is, has, has evolved. Yeah. I mean, I was, we were talking about that yesterday and I was thinking about it and I think, um, you know, looking back 10, 15 years ago, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of kind of the, the quiver mentality that we have now. <clears throat> so specific snowboards for specific types of riding. Um, and I think that, we've learned a lot in over the last 10 to 15 years. Like if you think back, you know, whatever it was 10 or 15 years ago, when uh, the rocker boards first started coming out, that was kind of like every brand just kind of slapped it on every, every board. And that was like, you know, Oh, you're riding rails. Oh, you need a rocker. Like, Oh, you're riding powder. Like, Oh, the rocker makes sense. Like, I think since then to now, now we understand uh, you know, where rocker makes sense to use, where camera makes sense to use, how to blend them together, uh, how to how to make shapes that work for powder specific, for free riding, for jib. Uh, so it's, I think that's where the progression has really come. There's, and I think on top of that, like the materials that we're using now are, are much better. Uh, you know, I think it's, rad that arbor has been doing this for 25 years and their you know focus on environment has been since the beginning um but just looking at you know what we were able to use for uh the candle rain you know a lot of the materials are are bio-based um the edges are recycled and like the entire factory runs on uh solar um so those are all things that are progressing i know other brands are doing uh you know, very similar things. And I just think collectively as a, as a whole, like snowboarding is just taking better steps in that direction. Um, Cause you know, you could easily just throw plies of, of poly and, and, <laughs> you know, crappy materials together and call it a day. But I think that, you know, collectively we're, we're making strides in the right direction. Um, so I think all those things together, but for, for the purpose of, you know, for a candle, the, I would say like the, uh, the progression in the, in the shapes and, uh, what we know about, uh, you know, those camber profiles of rocker versus, uh, camber, uh, you know, all those different things have, have come together. So then we're able to make like these really incredible solid boards. Um, this one specifically as like kind of that freestyle all mountain board but you know also thinking about how to create the best jib board how to create a great free ride board and so on so i don't know that was a pretty long-winded answer but 
that's kind of my mentality with it. Cause it's not, it's not like there's probably some very specific things. Um, you know, you could, you could, uh, ask Jay Stone or, or like JG, like some of the, uh, some of the legend board builders uh, on like the specifics of what has progressed over the last 10 years. But for me, just as a rider, what I've seen is, is really like honing in on, on what these boards are going to be used for. No, you did great on that. That was awesome. And, and tech talk, I find interesting as I get older, I used to not give a shit. I'm curious with Candle, are you guys going to build a separate team as well for the collection or is it you're the marquee guy? Uh, no, I mean, the whole the whole uh, point of it is to uh, to work with, you know, new riders like this last year. We started working with Estelle Pensiero and uh, and then existing Arbor riders as well. Um, the you know, it's not like we're going to do an exclusive team or anything like that under Candle, but the. Uh, the idea is to be able to like collaborate with with other riders so that's what i'm really excited about because i i love just making things together you know yeah killer that's awesome now uh it seems like arbor's making some big changes over there the in-house team is killer you got dave marks you guys just brought over trev brady who's a good friend of mine uh you just got to kill Yosh is taking photos. Who else is over? You got, it seems like it's just a killer in-house team over at Arbor these days, right? Yeah. We got Eddie wall, Eddie wall. Well. How could I forget? Legend. Yep. Yeah. Derek Gibbs, um, who is the product developer. Uh, he just came over from, from vans and he's incredible. Um, yeah. Matt Patty, uh, just got hired on, uh, this last summer and he's our new GM uh running running the ship for us and i i really i can't say enough good things about matt patty i think he has an incredible vision for the brand and and you know he has the knowledge and the abilities to actually translate that into into change and yeah i'm i'm super excited to be part of the part of the project cool uh, one thing I was also curious about when it comes to building these boards out, have you been getting a bunch of samples and testing and refining? Yeah. Yeah. That's been the best part about it is like getting the boards, trying them out, uh, you know, just getting, getting feedback back and forth. Like I, I was working directly with, with Eddie and George Kent um, on building these boards. If you've never heard of George Kent, he's built, snowboards for the last like 20 years um incredible uh board engineer and eddie yeah eddie's a legend so um just getting to work with those guys and, and getting samples in and riding them and, and putting in little tweaks here and there and um that whole process has been really special because i've been a part of that uh you know development process in the past um but only like a small part where i give my notes and then kind of move on. Uh, but this has been really hands on and, a uh, just a cool experience to, to get to live through. Cool. So you're, so you're psyched on the final product. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And the cool part is it's, you know, it's one of the, the collection. So, uh, the, the design process and, and that kind of feedback loop that, I was just talking about like that doesn't stop now. It, like it continues on uh, to the next board, and and we're hoping to to really continue uh, developing on our existing boards as well within the line. So um, yeah, it's all all fun stuff. It's I mean to be able to just talk about snowboarding and and snowboards and and get to understand how these little tweaks affect how you ride and and the feeling that you get in response like what a what a dream you know it's such a cool cool thing to be a part of mm. amazing um I, I guess the last question i have is uh you know how are you feeling since you won the junior jam back in the day you know we're talking <laughs> u.s open junior jam winner I was still I, that was the still running high. that was the the pinnacle of my career for sure um <laughs> that happened uh uh what was it 13 years ago or no 23 years ago um so gabe did you win the uh the junior jam no i got i got a second though once oh you didn't win the junior jam oh, huh? that's not a winner though. that's tough huh. 
Dude, I had a yeah, I might have to, I was going uh, against a I might have to rest. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you, what do you want? Yeah, you lost the sage. You lost the <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, Fucking yeah. Gabe's a solid second, dude. Was just so- yeah, right there. <laughs> I it's might have to recall my used. my comment about the cool Ferguson. I'm pretty sure that Ben won the Junior Jam. So uh, oh, we're, we're playing, Ben Ben got we're kind of on that place. same level. Me and Ben, uh, you know. Ben got a third place, <laughs> and it's when Scotty James won it. So my shit's way cooler. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you need another uh, if you need another you. name for uh, a board, I was thinking this the social drinker from your famous quote in the grenade video of. I'm a social drinker. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, just throwing that out there. I got ideas. That First was, one's uh, free. That was insane. Um, when we were filming that uh, Smell the Glove, I think, I forget how old I was. I was like mm, 17 years old up in up in Portland, Oregon. And it was like, I, I'm pretty sure we shot that. That was like midday at a bar and they like filled up the the, uh, the vodka bottles with water and um and but the best part about that whole experience was getting to go in like i don't know if you remember when shane flood uh in the hotel room Mm -hmm. like you're on the phone what do you mean they don't have salmon and like smashes the phone and everything like getting to see that in person being in the room and like you know obviously hearing about paying the the damages on the room and (laughs) all that shit and then and then also uh, you know, those, uh, there, there's just endless stories from that. And it was, that was a, that was a hell of a time for sure. Golden era. It was a golden era. Well, uh, Pat, yeah. thanks for calling and taking the time to fill us in on candle. And, uh, sounds like a rad project you got going on. And, uh, we got a bunch of stuff to cover in this, so we're going to keep it moving, but it's always a pleasure to chat with you, my friend. Heck yeah, Christian, you do well. And, uh, Joe, Gabe, Gimble. Love y'all. Love, Love you, too. Love you, Love you, dog. Peace. See you, Pat. Okay. We'll talk to you Later. soon. Later. Bye. Amazing. Uh, you know, that time Smell the Glove came out, I got absolutely shit-faced at a party at uh, Plymouth State when I was the same age as Pat, actually. <laughs> and I went up to him and I said, I was like, man, your cab nine nose is inspirational, man. <laughs> Just like probably drooling on myself like a complete <laughs> idiot. <sighs> yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gabe might have been there last night, actually, but uh, who knows? We don't know. We don't night. remember. Who was there? La- who was there last night? Anybody? Grave Digger was there last night. Grave Digger was there last night. Grave Digger got kicked out of the bar. It was pretty sick. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Everyone was there, dude. Sarge has been a real MVP. Yeah, That's shout sick. out Sarge. That's awesome. That is shout sick. Out Sarge. Yeah, shout out Sarge. All right, we got a couple other things to move through here. Um, we just covered product talk. We're going to talk about some videos. Um, before we get into videos, though, I'd be interested to hear your guys' predictions. This is from Bartle Trick. He wants to know, what are your predictions for video of the year slash rider of the year? Mm. No clue. Yeah, I don't know. Not, it's, too, it's too early to call it, Yeah, right? too early, right? What do you mean? Like, Torment's going to go fucking brown cinema, 100%. Did like, you, you I, never know. No, nah, I would put 10 grand on it. I don't think it. I've seen... <laughs> You, Did you, you hear that? I'll put that. ten grand that torment that goes Stark brown cinema could... movie of the year before I've even seen it. Hundred percent. That's, a, that's wow. a bold claim. That's bold. What well, is it bold though? <laughs> like, it's actually not that bold. But the ten grand is bold. The ten grand is bold. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. Mm. It's torment and brown cinema. Like for torment, like that is like look at all of their posts over the Have last you guys two seen months. The ride, or I guess not video year, but the ride. I mean ride video. Jed Anderson part. But that's all I've heard up. from the ride video. It's only heard dude, that. Dude, Reed's shit's good. Jill's shit's good. Everything's good in there. But mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, all right. So let's just so hone in on it. So, you, so you're claiming Brown. What about Rider of the Year? I think Tour Gear deserves it. I don't know. I just don't know. Like if you think of a Brown part, like I heard it's two songs, two years. You got to think you got two years to make that part. And we then didn't do two years. We filmed like I went on a week trip the first year. We had to do a second year because we didn't film enough. It's been promoted. It like a two it's year. been promoted as a two year. But that doesn't. That's that's irrelevant. Two Rise years, three years. years. Well, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, the this amount of years is irrelevant. Yeah. I think like like Tor Gear did his part in three months. I think it's pretty good. I think T Ricky will probably win Rider of the Year. Well, he deserves say, Rider of the Year. Every year, he deserved yeah. it when Sage won it, and he deserved Movie of the Year with Dark Matter over Joy, in my opinion. But 
like Ricky's just like above us. Dude. He's on another planet. Like, uh, I mean, it's like the velvet cakes thing. Like even to like the best backcountry pro snowboarder, you've never seen that. <laughs> like, I don't know if Gabe, if you showed up at a zone with like that many pillows. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what do you got? What do you mean pillows? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think I've heard, Tra- I think Travis Rice, like I think he embodies, I think it's cool. And I think for his eight, like he's just doing it. Like I think mm-hmm. he would, is a good embodiment I think of rider. He, he just got that cover. He filled yeah, the that cover. dope part and then he won his own event. So it's like, damn, fuck, hard to, you know, I, ba- like, I yeah, back yeah. that. Yeah. That and I think, not, I think snowboarding should acknowledge But that. that's just in that one, like that's right, we're just, just talking one landscape, but like, well, there's also women as well. Uh, like which, which woman is going to win rider of the year and. I don't know. I mean, videos are not uh, technically like segregated by. Sex, I thought uh, like Emma and Kennedy's thing was awesome. Dorothy, I thought that was really cool. I thought mm-hmm. that was really like well made. It they had really good snowboarding in that. Uh, again, I resonate with more with like street snowboarding. So it's like that's what I see, and I'm like that's really cool. Have, have you seen Bloom? Yeah, yeah Ilfa, I like and Ilfa's I really like Ilfa and, really and Grace. Good. And yeah, I thought Bloom was good. a really really good video. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually I thought Colton did a great great job with that and made it exciting and it was it was well paced and you know everybody did really well in that Mm -hmm. um i don't know i think that's it's so subjective right like it's so subjective because like i'm coming from a street background i'm like well i maybe jed rider of the year Mm -hmm. and it's like but it's like then the travis rice so Mm -hmm. you know that was cool what you like it is hard and maybe to your point maybe it needs to be broken up like street and backcountry because you can't compare Jed and Travis. And that Travis is Rice. and that is like definitely like like even with what I said with Torger, I honestly didn't even think of Ricky because he's so fucking far up. Like for sure. Like but but, but that's he Tiger. Deserved, that's Tiger. But like he like, like Ricky in my opinion. Yeah, like just with like I saw a Sequencer. I haven't seen the Rod movie, so I haven't seen Jed's part. But like. Dude, just, like, the fact that, like, you found that, dude. Like, that's Rider of the Year. Like, you put in enough work to find that. Like, that's, <laughs> like, like, that's, like fucked up. Mm-hmm. But, I like that. But that's backcountry, right? And that's, like, maybe, and I would say good sport, like, Schubert's rail ender choice. Like, you don't always find something that fucked that, like, you can also the lace. The ender ender. The ender ender was, like, totally. that was so gnarly. Yeah, and I think... That's kind of the that's the that's the conversation is like they're so different, mm-hmm. and then skating you have like street and like bowl mm-hmm. and half pipe, but they're they're just so different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're still the same in a weird way, right? Yeah, like I don't know. So snowboarding is so different in that way where it almost needs this new its own category. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you got to go like like there it, like say and I'm speaking from like there being one thing, but like if there was one hub and it was like. There was like street part of the year, mm-hmm. contest rider of the year, backcountry rider of the year, rider of the fucking year. And the rider of the year is like more based on your impact, right? Like how hard did you hit the snowboard? Like if you're like a street guy and you watched maybe something that was like a backcountry segment, but you were like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Like that's more your, your, uh, the, the rider of the year is like the overall impression from like all of it. I do think there's even amongst street people, there's always a, an appreciation for backcountry stuff. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, I could, you know, you're like, I could never do that. Yeah. And you hear real guys, like street backcountry guys say, I could never do the street stuff. But it's like, you probably could. <laughs> and you, but you in probably, a weird way, you probably could, right? Like, not to the extent, but like, we couldn't, I don't know. Like, it's the, it's just time on board. Like, what yeah. we were saying about moto, yeah. like time on moto. Like, yeah. you get used to the yeah. fucking throttle. You know? And we've done both, but like, Travis and these things are, that's a whole nother stratosphere yeah i love i love like when you take you know for example i'm biased but i'm good friends with bodie and i would love when you'd see a part like bodie where he's going to fucking alaska and then he's going and he's riding street rails and he's doing hammers and then you know he's hitting wedges and it's like yeah that those are hard to deny when you get someone that's full atv yeah when you got full underrated and just like to film it is hard because you got to think you got like kind of your time period for rails for sure and usually that time period is like if you fuck up you might miss out on like everything else like usually that's like when if you're gonna film gnarly rail shit it's like midwinter and, and like if you're you, gonna put out a full street part, you need all winter to do that too. Yeah, and so even if you're gonna dabble, it's like you probably are gonna do that early season while the snow conditions are sketchy. Mm-hmm. But like 
I mean, and this was like, even when we filmed Judd's project, I remember you were like, oh, you should put skate in it. And it's like, yeah, but like in order to film a full skate, like the risk of him getting fucked up so high. And that's yeah. like, I mean, you got to like play to what you can do, you know? Yeah. Well, let's run through a couple of videos that came out that are really uh, incredible. You touched on Dorothy. I think we might have talked about that in the last video, but uh, Kennedy and Emma and then Bryden killed it on that. Uh, mm -hmm. Great project, mainly street. Um, so that one was a heater. And then Burton, we talked about Bloom. And, uh, you know, we talked about Ilfa's footage is incredible. Grace's footage is incredible. Winkleman, you know, I, I think this is an interesting topic because I'm, I'm, a am a big, uh, I'm a fan of Winkleman and I love, I love hard tricks, dude. I, I just, I'm, call, I'm, call with, me old I'm fashion. with you on that. And, and his he, last trick, dude, he serves up the yeah. switchback to 70 through the kink and then he pulls it back to regs and, and there's this kind of movement for like less is more and like, let's, let's hit this spot and do simple tricks and do it well. And, uh, Call me old fashioned. I fucking love myself a good old fashioned hard trick on a kink reel that like not very many people can do. I can't. I think there's probably you know ten people that could switch back to that thing. And if you're if if there's only ten I, people yeah. in the world that could fucking do that, then you're doing something that's really hard. You know. Yeah, and I it's like with it, Travis. I, I think know? it speaks to him to like want to do that too. Like Luke does contests, does all this stuff. He doesn't need to do that, but he does. And I, I was super impressed by that. And then there's Jesse with like a lot of taste and yep. it's like the right spot, the right trick, yep. very like calculated and cool. That's going to appeal to different people. But yes. I was happy to see Luke like pushing the, the boundaries. Like yep. I think that's what we need to do. And for whatever reason, I just think that that jumped at me too. Mm -hmm. I love that tail press back three Jesse does. And then you got yep. Zeb out there yeah. killing it. Rob's got good footage. So great video. <laughs> Bloom. Um, I unfortunately haven't done my due diligence and seen Sequencer yet. So you guys could maybe fill me in on that. I was just, I was super stoked. I saw it at the Hamburger Hut premiere, but it was, uh, I mean, that's like a, like I would say that's like maybe like a, like a modern brown. Like, you know, like that, t it was like pretty part based and like good fucking mm -hmm. soundtrack. Griffin had a sick ass party. He had a, he was like snowboarding to some Gilbert Crockett. Dude, yeah, Griff's And he has like a funny ass basketball clip at the start where it's just full air ball. <laughs> <laughs> and dope. you got Red Gerard in there. You got Trav. Yeah, Red shit is. You got Harrison Dude, Red's, Gordon. Dude, Red's shit Miles. was like. Nard, like for sure. Like I watched that and I was like, I don't know. Like this was like the first full year of like me trying to set up a program and just to see how many jumps Red hit and land. Like that mm -hmm. is so, like when you know, like it's like, fuck, dude. Mm -hmm. Like that's like, that's dude, proper. I mean, he filmed that and then, he, then he's doing contests the whole rest of the year. Yeah. And that's like, what you have to remember. Or, like, yeah. dude, and like, I don't know. Like mm -hmm. in backcountry, it's like there's a big difference between one and two tracks in the landing and like nine mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like you know for sure like i think that's like huge we don't right? have that in, you can just keep fixing chris's landing until he gets i like it. to get yeah. in there with a the shovel i like to get in there with a the shovel and just kind of just kind of fill in the hole chris yeah so there's first try every time hey, <laughs> see that was ft dude we were stomping it down what do you mean <laughs> definitely have done that before and then yeah like sweden and ricky ride some crazy shit Sick. they go like three runs fifteen thousand vertical like That's cool. Dude, like I think Sweeten and Ricky rode the uh, in uh, like you could say most technical. You could go all deep into like every AK project, but like most technical attainable snowboarding done by Ricky and Sweeten. Like Sweeten's POV video on YouTube, yeah. it just looks so fun. It yeah. is like <laughs> hype level at the bottom. It's just like. Dude, that's like that's got to be the equivalent of taking like the heaviest drug in the world if you fucking do that many pillows. In yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, okay. but it is like we watched the sweet POV and it's like you think he's at the bottom but he's not. not and he finally cool. gets to the bottom and it's just like the biggest like <gasps> <laughs> but like it, you like feel it and it's just like oh, dude that guy just did the biggest line of cocaine he's ever fucking <laughs> done you know like like you know the feeling and like it was so funny he was, was he good. was riding high bit of a clip high you could say <laughs> Cli like clip high without seeing the clip you just like <laughs> no you're like what just happened <laughs> all right i got another crazy. note about um paid programming's tuesday's child tuesday's child uh fucking Heater vid. Yeah. I think the boys are Canadian. The crew's Canadian. Right? Yeah, it's like Calgary, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Rippers. Yeah. 
Yeah, so if you guys haven't seen that one, there's some heat in that. Uh, I know there's a bunch we're missing, but those are the that's the quick cliff notes. And next episode of group chat will be fun because we can uh, we'll be able to dissect Brown Cinema. We'll be able to have our thoughts Ooh, on yeah. that. But yeah, Tuesday Talk Child about- is it's kind of like what you said. It's like a higher level street spots, really cool spots, high level tricks. And it was cool. You could tell they worked really hard. So Sick. yeah, they did a really good job. And then uh, we also are releasing a few videos coming up on our channel. We have uh, the Man Boys video, Tango Echo Chamber, coming out soon on our channel. We're releasing uh, Seb Picard's project, which I saw. Uh, the teaser looks insane, and there's some Mammoth Durrett clips in there. Mm. Oh shit! That's oh, shit. always a, that's always a treat. He's yeah. the big homie, right? Yeah, yeah, he dude. Does, hits the like death defiers. Yo, oh, dude, yeah, yeah. he's on he's DGAF. Hell, does right. not give a fuck mode yeah, twenty four seven. Yeah, uh, we're also releasing a Nils project. He's releasing his. Uh, footage on our site, uh, on our on our YouTube. So we got some stuff coming out on our channel. So Gimby, what do we got? Uh, I know you've been cooking up a couple projects this year. I'd love for you to fill us in on what you have been doing. Yeah, um, I will. I've been hiding out in the woods a lot. Woods are the jungle. Um, we started with Judd's last May. It was going to be a YouTube edit, just like kind of starting. It was pretty much like going to be like a welcome to the team for Monster. Um, cause he had kind of switched over the last couple of years and, uh, it went from like a YouTube project to like pretty much Austin and like Nico, I think talked and we're, everyone was like, you guys should go all in. So we filmed last summer for like, we filmed Indo, Chile, New Zealand. Um, and that was kind of just like to try and film surf and like get him used to backcountry and then. We filmed uh, all winter, basically. Like, or he did contests, and then he filmed Feb, Feb, uh, March, and then we went up to Alaska. So, like, Judd, like, I didn't, I went into the project thinking it was gonna be a YouTube, and it's pretty sick that like Judd came out with like a full piece, you know, kind of covering everything. And then we filmed Surf this summer, um, so that thing's gonna be kind of like a just off of what I've seen. It's like kind of more of an art project, but um, I'm super stoked on how that came together. And then Tour Gear, he'd always wanted to film a full part um, in the 2021-22 winter. We kind of like went in, that was like Tour Gear's first winter not doing contests. Um, We learned a lot, but we kind of came out with a lot of lessons, not a lot of clips. And um, we went into last year where we knew we were going to film a film part, but then it was like Judd and I were doing this YouTube project that turned into a movie. So I pretty much had to convince Tour Gear to be down to film with Judd. And then once I did that, then it was like, didn't really know what we were doing. But um, Tour Gear came out with a cool project that's going to be called Temple of the Dog. Judd's is Greenhorn. We're going to premiere both of those on November 3rd in La Jolla, California, San Diego area. And then um, we'll do Oslo. And we'll show both Torgir and Judd's, and then we'll do Innsbruck. And uh, Torgir's will be online right before Thanksgiving with Judd's, like, kind of early December. But, um, yeah, yeah, it was really cool. It was uh, – I've, like, always been hired to do projects, like, even with Stale Lines project. Like, that. Like it was his idea that, like, I helped him make. But I think what's really rad with both Judd and Torgir's is, like, that was fully like kind of from my heart. And I feel like it's not like, I think it's a rebrand for Judd. And I think it's like a rebrand kind of for me, like a lot of people, like even talking with Johan, he like, look at me as like the GoPro guy, but um, I've like been dabbling the last three years and like more kind of like filmmaking and cinema and, and Judd and uh, Torger's projects were like shot on the same sensor, same glass, a lot of work into the thought how it was going to look before we shot it. So super stoked on just how it came together. It was like a huge learning lesson, you know, big uh, stepping stone. Killer. Now, uh, we had some questions uh, particularly, not to revi- revamp you back to GoPro guy, because I know, like, why don't you let them know what you're filming on? Because you got you said you invested in a new camera recently, right? Yeah, so, like, for the tech nerds, make super simple. I... Um, I shoot on the red Komodo and the red V-Raptor and um, glass I've been using. It's called Lights, L-E-I-T-Z. It's the cinema company from Leica. And I have, I shot on that glass basically and then like a rehoused like 
1970s glass. So it's pretty sick because it's like 50 year old glass in like a modern housing and super delicate. But like when you pair that old glass with like a modern sensor, it creates like its own look which I think was portrayed really well in Tour Gears. Like when I watched Tour Gears, I'm like, that was fucking Leica. That's fucking sick. You know? Cool. I love the conceptualization of that. Now, we, we have an uh, Instagram question from Gambleezy916. <laughs> Again, that's Gambleezy916. <laughs> Phenomenal name. Might have to hit that one with the homies cooked. I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> Gambleezy916. <laughs> Definitely get homies <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, can you explain detailed settings for newly released GoPro Hero 12? Please nerd out. Air horn. Dude, uh, 4.7K, 8x7. That's the mode. The whole 8x7 thing, it just is, uh, it's the most amount of room on your sensor that you could get. So, like, it's really easy to, like, shoot the camera landscape and get something for Instagram Reels and YouTube versus like having to shoot it vertically and then like on your settings for color i would just choose like natural like it's just it's gonna look good like an iphone clip and then on your sharpening if you are using it in an editing suite i would use low sharpening if it's going straight from like the camera to the phone to the gram i would use medium and th i think that's all you need to know and you track all your clips right as far as like we, like a like a GoPro clip, like you're gonna track it and put them in the center of the frame, like the rider. Well, it depends, right? And that's what's sick with like the higher resolutions. Like for a long time, like every video you ever saw of me was 1080, even though I film it in 4K. So you can kind of like crop in and like fake how close you are. Um, but I I do that. You don't have to do that. That's like the step above where like. If you want to learn to do that, like like my YouTube has a lot of information, website, whatever. But like I think for most people, it's just like give Gabe a GoPro, he films it. Okay, maybe what, I want to put it on my phone. You know, what like, do you got on your on your channel for people interested in getting real nerdy on their settings and stuff? But, or on, your, most, on your website, sorry. Uh, but the website is like, and I released this in 2020, and it like when you read it right now, like I've been just super busy, so like a lot of the wording might be Hero Nine or Hero 10, but like, it's all the same shit, right? Like that's like the base of like how you take a GoPro clip and like you could sell it, you know, like I've had GoPro stuff on Times Square, like on that billboard and you can make it look beautiful. That's boss as hell. But yeah, it's like, you have to like, there's like a run through of like, you know, like how you wax your snowboard for a mm -hmm. pipe event, you know, it's like how you grease that clip up to like look like that. And I think, like, you know, GoPros are just funny because, like, in the beginning, I got into them because I couldn't afford a camera. But, like, you can make them look really, really good. And I think, like, what you'll learn in, like, the tutorial and, like, what even if you buy it now, like, I have a new one coming in the next, like, six months. Um, and if you, if you have the last one, like, you're going to get into this next one. I'm just going to, like, revamp it for, like, the new users. Um, but, like, dude, there's... You like the sickest thing with like hyper smooth and GoPros is like, I don't know, like look at all the new POV footage, like all the Ricky footage, like it looks fucked up, right? Mm -hmm. And then, like, even like some of Blake's stuff, like I love like the follow cams at Brighton or mm -hmm. like Griff stuff, like it looks mm -hmm. fun. And like it's yeah, the so backyard boogies are all GoPro, probably, right? yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. And like that is like Blake and Griff doing it, you know. And mm -hmm. like I've kind of told Griff the settings, I'm sure they're like in that ballpark, mm -hmm. but it looks good, dude. Like you can put it online, it looks fucking sick. But then I think like the my tutorial is more for like, okay, like if you're in the range of like wanting to really get into this, like we're gonna cover everything from like, yeah, how the GoPro works to like what the film standard is to like even like business practices and like you know how to like start your career is a filmmaker or a creative or like and i'm winter sports tailored you know like but we also talk about things like water housings and stuff that can you know like with the reds like in surf obviously you have to have it in a water housing to go in the water with snow you can you know like grocery bag hope whatever but like we've been talking about even using the water housing where it's like then you really don't have to like stress on if it got like mm -hmm. snow in it 
but um kind of just explain that because i feel like like for me like dude like i don't know if there was something like that available when i was growing up i probably would have got it and like i'm trying to figure out like that price point where it's like the right price and you actually like get value out of it you know like i'm not just trying to sell this to like get some money mm -hmm. it's like how can like uh, for me like i still have like a school and i'm paying and i don't have a degree you know like don't do that like <laughs> you could pay like a couple hundred bucks and like fucking there's like even what this chat with about like pitch decks simple shit yeah learn how to do it young <laughs> You don't need to go to like a four year college if you're thinking creative. In my opinion, right now, like mm. you're going to spend more than you're going to make mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Now, I'm curious when you were filming Judd surfing, were you in the water with the flippers and the red and shit? Like a surf filmer? I, uh, like that was like my dream, right? Like before I started filming like follow cams or anything, 2016, I was working at La Jolla Rusty and my dream was to like get a water housing. Like, I had a GoPro, I'd go to Black's every morning, swim, and just shoot GoPro photos and, like, just trying... So you're just treading water with a camera, waiting for people to... Treading water with a GoPro, not yeah. even a camera. Yeah. You're, like, looking like the biggest goon out there, just, like, <laughs> with a... You know, but it was what I could afford at the time, and I uh, I eventually bought a Sony housing, and then I bought a Black Magic housing, and I bought a Red housing, and um, I progressed, and I always... It was, like, my hobby to learn how to shoot surf. And then when I did Judd's project, luckily I had a, I had a uh, close friend, David Biner, who really like Judd, the success of Judd's project that like, comes down to that dude. Like he was like our travel agent, our water photog, our just like lifeline and in Indo. Like it made us feel like we were at home and he just had us so dialed and he, he didn't have a red or anything, but like I had the housing, so I gave it to him. And I would shoot the land and he would shoot the water. But like for surf, it's so important to have like two angles. Like same with snowboarding, right? Like mm -hmm. you need it like to tell the story. And uh, it was really cool to have Biner there and uh, just learn a lot, dude. Like three years ago, like if you looked at all my surf clips, like they were so bad. Like it's so different than snowboarding. You're just like the only place that's comparable in snowboarding is Alaska. And nobody really has that experience like is a hole so it's like to shoot like a little dot so far away it's like i don't know it's like so much respect to like a lot of the like surf filmers like kai neville or dan scott tom jennings like Ta taylor Steele. like a lot of these dudes you watch their shit and you're like oh dude that'd be so easy to just like film on the beach and get every wave and then you're like wait dude like you can't lose your focus for one second. Like you can't just like, mm. like, I hate when people come up to me on the tripod, like, Oh, what camera is that? Or like, how are you doing? It's like, yo, there might be like a yeah, there's set. No walkie talkie, right? Yeah. There, I mean, there's surfers out there, mm -hmm. right? Like they can't and communicate. You just gotta know, like you, you just know it. You just gotta, yeah, like, you gotta know who judge. he is and yeah. you gotta like watch the ocean. And it's really hard when like, mm -hmm. like Judd, you know, like, like say you like Judd's we're, a little guys kind of well and it's like a thing. surfer like the most like the easiest thing is like if a surfer has like a painted board or like something that stands mm. out but then it's like a judd like you're like a fucking civilian surfer you're paddling out into like a lineup with pros like mm. you want to be like low key like black wetsuit white surfboard like <laughs> i'm not here you know mm -hmm. but then like everyone's <laughs> black wetsuit white surfboard and then like i'm two miles away like where the fuck is judd you know like Crazy. and you start to learn their like paddle styles and just like the like rhythm of the ocean like i think weather has a rhythm but like it's really apparent in the ocean if you like if you just sit there and watch it for six hours from like a low tide to a high tide like how the sets change mm -hmm. it like will pick up for 35 minutes and you got to be like on and then it might die or mm. whatever but it, it it was just super cool it was like going to summer school like it felt like not that i like maxed in snowboarding but you just can't really film snowboarding in may to like you can go to New Zealand or mm -hmm. these places, but it's usually like a park or like, like it's hard to get back country. And that's like the hardest thing to film. I think it's mm -hmm. like Gabe, Gabe knows a lot. And even with like street stuff, like you're not filming streets in Wanaka. Like you have a limited window to do yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're also 
posted up in the boardies and the flip flops. Yeah, as opposed to <laughs> Minnesota Bro, filming sex and I don't know seven hundred tries on a fucking down bar. I don't know what's worse though, dude. Like three hours in Selena Cruz, like on the beach, dude. I'm sitting in my like little foldable chair with my tripod and my margarita's I, almost empty. No, dude, I, dude. But, like, <laughs> then the, what do you do? Like, no, that's but hell. the thing is that that's no actually one, hell. no one understands. Like, dude, it's a hundred fifty. It's like a hundred four <laughs> degrees out, and the reflection off the sands like one twenty five. I'm a six foot three ginger, dude. I do not get tan. <laughs> I can't see the sun, dude. Like I'm like in my saran. It's like a hundred fifteen degree sauna in here, and I'm like on the fucking red. Like I can't even see outside. You're in. You're closed off. You can only see through the screen, and it's like, like, dude. So much respect to every surf filmer. Like it is fucked, yeah. dude. To just stand like, and it's like snowboarding. It's like you go to a street spot, and like you either get the clip or you don't. Like surfing, it's like. You get you you're, you're with someone with like Tosh Tudor, dude. You're standing on the beach for twelve hours that day, oh, that, and you don't that, know when the clip comes. Well, that's like filming sex scene <laughs> on a down bar. It's the yeah. same thing. Yeah. It's, if you ever been to the streets with Joe, the, that's the exact same <laughs> scenario. When he starts setting it up, you're like, really? This is the this is the rail you're gonna try to go to the end of? Oh it's god, smell it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we go into the night, dude. I'm an eighteen hour fucking ship kind of guy. Yeah, no, it was cool though. It was like a. <laughs> God forbid you're pulling the bungee for the guy. That's just yeah. mine, that's that's hell on earth is what that is. Dude, I fuck the bungee. Was, the bungee's gnarly. It starts out as like, can you just real, throw me into this once or twice? <laughs> just want to feel it out. And then you're shifting in new people and you're like, Yeah, the bungee's yeah. hectic. And you're like, Joe, you got this. And he's just like, <laughs> Dude, I've been with Nick, like pulled up to the registration at the open. It was like maybe a practice day or something. And we see Gimby walking down the sidewalk, and his eyes are closed. And he's like walking really <laughs> slow. He's like rode all day filming, and then edited all night, just worker, just fucking busting. And he's like walking down the sidewalk to go ride and film some more, but just like eyes are closed. That's <laughs> awesome. Got to sleep where you can, man. Yeah, that's a lifer. Good shit, Gimby. Uh, one other thing that's interesting to talk about too. We talk snowboard. Let's get into some purist fringe type of shit. But like. In snowboarding, you take like Brown, for example, or, or even let's take the video last night, like Colton's filming style, which is is one of my favorites, if not one. He's one of my favorites. I got a few favorites, but uh, I love Justin Meyer. Shout out. I can't. I can't. That's my guy. But Colton, I'm a huge fan of. And if you notice, there's this combination of uh, 16 and HVX fisheye. It's like yeah. that's the kind of like that's the top you know, the top of the totem pole. That's how we make a lot of street videos. If you're, if you're in that upper echelon and you've all, you've kind of had a different mentality where you just like sprinkle in GoPro and you got red now, but what do you think about the kind of, uh, the different form, like formats, basically yeah. mediums? I think it's the most important. Yeah. Like, like Torger and Judd's like we, I, I didn't want to shoot anything that wasn't POV on a GoPro. Like, so the only, there's, there's two shots in Judd that are GoPro, and then there's maybe, like, four in Tour Gears, and they're all in Alaska, where that was. And that, I think, like, Alaska, you need the POV to really tell the whole story, but I think that's, like, you got to look at your format to, like, your story, and, like, how the format can help you tell the story, and I think, like, for, for, like, Judd's is, like, an art piece, Tour Gears is, like, a snowboard film, and like it's the simplest thing like you won't maybe the average person won't notice it but like in tour gears like if you go through every frame like the white balance is like exactly the same like the color of his jacket is the same and that's like the hardest part so like when you're watching it to the to the eye it's just flowing so smooth that you don't notice like the transitions in each like cut whereas like when you use like say a GoPro to a red to an HVX to a 16 millimeter. It's very distinct every time you make that change. And it's almost like when I film, it's like, if I'm going to change, it's like to bring you in. Like in Judd's, it's like, there's a lot of scenics and it's kind of starting the part. And there's like, kind of like three clips that I didn't know where they fit later on, but those happen. And then it takes you into like his first ever run in AK. And, like, you don't know that unless, like, you heard this episode or whatever. But it's, like, that moment in the part of the song, it's kind of, like, slow. And it's, like, you almost feel like you're there with him. And then it goes back to, like, the snowboard edit. And I think that's, like, 
sometimes like a GoPro can do that for you. Sometimes it's a 16 millimeter. Sometimes it's the HVX. Like I thought in their, uh, like the Atlas video last night, like it was so sick that it was just like, it started with like Tommy just sessioning this fucking staircase. And it was just like, you didn't know if it was an intro or whatever, but it was just like, I liked how it just started, but they chose how it was like, it stayed congruent through the whole movie. So it like, you end the film and you're like, that made sense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Great video. Great dissection of it. I've, I've heard, uh, I've heard videos like kind of described as, you know, I forget who it was, Mac Dog. He was just like, you're just trying to create a feeling. Yeah, dude, it's a feeling. The whole thing, like, Judd's is a feeling. Like, the whole, the beginning's supposed to confuse you. The kind of end of the beginning is just like, you're kind of sitting there, like, what is happening? And then it's like really fast paced, the rest of it. So like, you're, le you're left bewildered at times. Yeah, you're just kind of <laughs> confused, like, which is, like, I tried to confuse you, you yeah. know, like, yeah. I want you to start it, like, with where the fuck is this going, mm -hmm. and then it's like, wow, this fucking shot's really long, like, where are we going, and then it's like, and then it doesn't stop, and then it's over, and it's like, whoa, it's over, and it's like, I feel like I'd rather, like, like, Judd's is, I mean, like, two, without credits, it's like 1231, and Tour Gears is like 730, but it's like, there's no fluff, like, just like it's what it is like judd doesn't have a lot of lifestyles in his but like it's like the slow-mo like tube shots or like the lifestyle like where you see his face you see the emotion and whatever and i think like i tried to you know getting all fucking niche and tech geek like that's why i shot the lights 0 0.8 it's because it's like it's this really like untouchable lens for most people to buy but it creates this like feeling where it's like you can't reproduce that in other, any other camera like even if it's a red it's like the red is just like that's the bullshit it's like what's on the front of the red that matters and like you can cre you can create a feeling with the front of the camera that like that's why you don't need like a crazy you, you can do a better project on a shittier camera with that lens than you can on a red with like a cheap lens mm -hmm. but that's even Chris like you watch six you know Colton made that video yeah, yeah. the style it's yeah. the yeah. style like, yeah, I think everyone has. Their I know own what kinda, Meyer makes. You know a what video. Justin Meyer. I, I know a daughter right yeah. made something exactly, yeah. and that's why I think it's cool. And that sounds like yeah. you have your own creating your own style, and you have your own style. Yeah, you know, that's I think I think it was it was like or when I watched, I went to the Annecy thing and saw Beyond Metals and Get Buck, and then I've seen Atlas and Camp Robbers, and then we'll see Brown and the Vans one tonight. But I think what's cool is that like. Every video I've seen is so different, which mm -hmm. is dope. Yeah, you don't want the same point. shit. You don't good want the point. same shit. Like, mm -hmm. and totally. I don't want someone to like be making videos like me or me trying to like make videos like Brock. Like, mm -hmm. it's just like, dude, we're all so good at our own lane. Like, Germ is such like a unique one in making like his fucking look or like, you know, just shooting what you might think or like whatever photos like going down the run and then you look at it on Instagram later and you're like, whoa, dude, like that was crazy. I also think no, shout out to shit. those filmers, that unsung heroes, kind of like the Brocks, the Coltons, they're like doing all this and they're making all these guys look so good. Like you said, yeah. Brock cares. Good point. Like you as well. Caring about that, that's like six people in this giant sphere and if we lost them, it's like, it's cr it's kind of crazy to think about, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Colton Feldman's important to snowboarding to me. Yeah. Like, he created this project, makes those guys look amazing. Like, Dude. Brock Nielsen, like, the same exact thing. Like, mm -hmm. he's giving everybody, like, a, f a voice, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of unsung heroes because I think it's just, like, a little name in the credits and they made it, but it's like, mm -hmm. they yeah. are the figureheads of, like, this entire snowboard video thing you was you included like i think that's incredible dude. and i think that's something that needs to be celebrated too well even dude i bet thank you and but it's uh more like that's why i get so hyped on like fucking snowboard filmers even if even if you're just like a kid with a gopro like mm -hmm. i met a kid i think it's oscar in australia he's like 17 dude hustling doing like what i've been doing the last four years i'm like dude I didn't even know about that at 17. Yeah, like, that's cool. sick, you yeah. know? Like, No, he'll probably be a straight G in, like, five years. Mm -hmm. Dude, in five... So it's bad. like, if you knew... if he, He's, like, already, like, as good as me at 17. It's like... Pfft, like, I I didn't start taking anything seriously until 22. Mm -hmm. Like, in five years is a lot of time. But that's important, too. Like, cultivate that next thing, and then he's got riders underneath him who are younger, yeah. and then the whole thing keeps kind of going, right? Yeah. Like, 
that's what we talked about, like that fear of like there's no one next in line. Yeah. And that gets scary. But as long as there's kids and they're 18 and they're 14 and they're mm-hmm. they're they're feeling the way we felt, that's then it's you know sick. it's gonna be okay. Dude, mm-hmm. it's it's a trip. And I think like the one thing like and it can be in snowboarding or like filming or whatever, but just like don't like limit yourself. Like you can do like I never dude, I was for a long time my biggest goal ever was like to own a red. And I was like, I don't even I've never turned one on. Like I don't know what like that even like it'd be so cool to be able to do that. And then it's like it's a trip to even like own one later on. But then like that thing becomes like a bird in like an old car or something. But it's cool to look back and just remember that like perspective, you know? And mm-hmm. I think it's it's cool to like want to grow, you know, like even like after Judd and Torgir's projects, like I've thought about like going over to film or a different system or whatever. Cause it's like, I chose the GoPro for a certain system to shoot like Stale's lines. And then it was like, we did like a little, like kind of short film rumble. That was like a real remake, a real snow with Torgir. And that was just like, it didn't have a vision going into it. It was the real snow and what we had filmed that winter. But it was like Judd and Tour Gears was like Red and Leica. Like, mm-hmm. that's what I want that to be. Brock had his, like, what he wants this one to be, Vans as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that's even, like, for me, it's like, okay, like, where's that next step? Like, I don't want to just, like, do what I did with Judd and Tour Gear again. Like, I, that's, I mean, that's what like that was Justin for. Justin Meyer started out filming Bear videos and then did his own thing. And you start where you're at and then you progress and move. And it's yeah. like... I th- that's what's cool. I think you're you're only progressing, and you're who knows what you're gonna do. But and, it's gonna. But be I really think cool. that's like what young young kids gotta remember. You know that always. it does take time too, right? A lot like, of time. I think Good that's point. part of it Good too. Point. That's the huge part. Like, my, how long Myers made? How many VG videos and what he's done before? Two hundred. Yeah, yeah. And and, and like, <laughs> it goes back to like it just takes time, and you just keep those young kids making movies now. Yeah, make another one, and make another one, and keep making another one. Like, I think one thing: don't be scared to like just put it out and get over it. Like I totally at this point, I hate Judd's project and I Mm -hmm. hate Torger's project. And I'm like, (laughs) so fucking stoked to like, you've just seen it, dude. I've listened, I've listened to like all of those songs, like 4,000 times. Mm -hmm. And I know like we all could have done it like maybe a little better. And that's Mm -hmm. just from my heart. Yeah. But it's like, don't be scared to just like put it out. Who the fuck cares what people think, dude? Like tomorrow, nobody's going to remember. Nobody thinks about you as much as you really think they do. You know? (laughs) And, and then you have the opportunity to do that again. Like, that's what's so cool is like, you know, you, you're you always like, yeah, we could have done that better. And then chasing, you try. Chasing the dragon. Yeah, chasing the dragon. You got to chase the next year, man. I'm going to film the part. And then next you blink year. and it's been 20 years. <laughs> and then you're like, like oh, I never God. got the dragon. I never man. got the dragon. But I think that's what, like, it doesn't happen overnight. Like, I am about to be 29 years old in January. And, like, I've been trying to learn about what a camera is since 14 or 13. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's... Six, like Gabe said, 20 years of snowboarding to mm-hmm. get to Gabe. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. this shit doesn't, it's, you got to commit. This isn't yeah. a, you found snowboarding on TikTok yesterday and you want to be fucking right. so-and-so tomorrow. Oh, yeah. 20 years in, and you just know that you haven't done your dopest shit yet. Dude, you know? facts. Mm-hmm. Fucking facts. Which oh. is hopefully inspiring, right? Yeah. It's like, it's exciting to be like, I, you, you're like, I got more to, I got more to do. I got more to give. Like, mm-hmm. the feeling of being like, I got nothing left. You're, then you're done. Mm-hmm. Like no, Chris sure. has turned his career into like this media and this podcast. Like there's always lanes to take, mm-hmm. and it's it's. I think it's hopeful. I think it's cool, dude. It's and like, dude, just to watch like like obviously like like fucking Travis rides insane in AK, but like really just watch like where Mickle is fucking gone in the last three years, and like like I don't know. I'm like pretty close in age to Ferg, and to see like what like your brother's done, and like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's like, dude, we're just like, like if you think about how much experience like this crew of shitheads has to what Travis has had, it's like, yeah. dude, we have a whole other twenty years. Just someone give us the fucking money, dude. Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. But you will get, like, you will be that. Like yeah. you said, if you st- one step in front of the other, like it's no different this year to last year and this year to yeah. next year. And you're gonna do that. And you're gonna blink, and someone's gonna. And you wake like, up, and you're 60. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. What have I been doing with Grand my life? Grandies, your sauna's fucking <laughs> greasy, dude. <laughs> I got all this useless snowboard knowledge. I wonder what I could do with it. Oh yeah, maybe I'll start a podcast. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. All right, uh, we're going to get into the pub beer crap shoot. We're going to have Gabe Ferg over here roll uh, f- for, uh, we'll tell you what you have to do. So it's time to roll some dice what? for some cheap fun presented by pub beer. No matter what you're doing, cracking open a pub beer for some cheap fun is always a safe do? bet. I'm going to, uh, what, what number is, Goon Gear is a six. Is that what I got a got? six and a one then, six and a one. You got a seven. This is a great question for Gabe. We can go around the horn with this, but uh, Gabe, who's your favorite person to party with? Oh, um, that's a hard one, man. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are awesome. Favorite person to party with? Favorite person to party with right now is Mason Jar, for sure. Mm. Mason Lemery, yeah. Good answer. He's got the energy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Joe? My, mine's a bit of a three-parter. I would say Brady Lamb, Josh Manolas, and Tommy Gizmi. Mm. Uh, Minnesota, kind of true. The, kind of the quad factor, yeah. the trifecta. We're definitely yeah. going to need to get that gurney for, for Tommy tonight. <laughs> I don't think yeah. he's going to be standing upright. Yeah. Uh, Gimby? So I gotta say, Brandon, because it always ends in us either a little too many mushrooms or a lot of weed, and it's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Perfect. That's amazing. Well, I'll say this: uh, it's been a great banter journey with you guys. Uh, I think it's time to throw a bow on it. Did you guys have fun chatting today? Yeah, I had mad fun, dude. This was dope. We had cool. a blast. Mm-hmm. So dope. Getting to know these guys a little bit better too. Yeah, like it's exactly. been really cool. You know what's fun? It's like kind of opposing perspectives in a lot of ways, but mm-hmm. it made for a great conversation. But mm-hmm. I think at the end of the day, it's like, I don't know, at the very beginning we spoke about, or Johan said it, it's like, we live this shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. good point. Like, we I think that's totally. like the fabric where it's And like, the mutual respect. Like, I think I look yeah. at what you guys do and I'm like, that's fucking incredible. Mm-hmm. And I think that's cool to like be able to take that step back and be like, what you guys do is so impressive and so cool. And, and it feels cool to just be able to celebrate that and be like, this is fucking awesome to watch mm-hmm. and not be threatened or yeah. not be weirded out. It's just like, this is, I think cool. snowboarding's in like a really sick place. I agree. It's just I like, agree. we're the beginning of a new era right mm-hmm. now. I think so. I think 2030, it's going to be a whole different ball game. It's mm-hmm. about a, a bit of a new year, new me scenario. <laughs> yeah. <New> basically <laughs> Grandy's is basically going to own that fucking arena down there and he's going to be at the top box. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We'll see if you guys keep buying smelling salts, which are available <laughs> at bombhole.com. We got a new brick. Uh, just came out. It's a three pack. It's a perfect gift for the holidays. You want? You don't know what to get your buddy? Get him a brick of smelling salts. Are you kidding me? We've been He's, whacking them too. Yeah, Dude, we've been putting fun. them down. We've it's been fun. Fun. We've been <laughs> cutting inch. into the margins over here. We've been cutting into the margins. Oh, yeah. So uh, I just want to say thanks to everybody that tunes in. Uh, all of our sponsors, we appreciate you. Again, we got a union binding giveaway. Comment. Tag a friend that needs bindings on this photo on Instagram of our show. Uh, thank you to Silk D. A pleasure. Yeah, everything Silk that D. you do. He slaves over this edit. It's a long process. It's Thanks, really, Silk. It's really easy. This job is <laughs> it's a lot fun. like filming Sexton trying a down bar for about 14 hours. Mostly just zoned out the whole time. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, Chris. Thanks for letting me talk about my humble snowboard brand, too. I appreciate that yeah, very it's much. Been a fun chat. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, we got another episode coming at you guys next Wednesday. And uh, thanks for listening. We appreciate you guys. Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you. Over and out. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for coming and chatting, guys. I mean, for a fun show. Dude, that was good.